Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of a very special podcast. Yes, this is the podcast in which you talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear and then discuss them over a glass of wine. I'm Patrick, I'm done, your host, and I'm joined here, as always, by Kat Halstead, the author! Yes! Woo! Round of applause. She's back. She's back in the New York groove. She's here for another Did episode. I vanish? Are there episodes that exist without me? You threatened to walk in the last episode, I think. I think uh, it was a very controversial episode, if you listen to the Murphy Brown app. Oh, yeah. I, I, I listened to most of it, I think. There might be a part where, like, I listened to it on two different devices from two different, um, like, one was I started on YouTube, and then I pulled it up on my phone's podcast stuff. So I just, like, skipped ahead. I was like, I think this is where I was. Oh, so you might have, like, you might have missed out the, uh, maybe skipped over the controversial parts. The part where I'm like, God damn it, Patrick, I hate you and your voices. Yeah, uh, so we had, like, an hour-long fight after we recorded. I was told I was not allowed to do voices again. But then we got a lot of thumbs up <laughs> on my voices, so the voices are here to stay, girl. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes, so keep sending us thumbs up on my voices, and I don't know, who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll get a voice tonight. But... Why are you guys encouraging this? Gosh. It's fun. It's a fun world. And I don't know. We just want fun. This podcast is about fun. That's all that matters. All right. So I know we said this is the podcast where you talk about TV series from yesteryear, but tonight, yes, we're going to the movies. It's a night at the movies. Woo! I should say popcorn. Yeah. Oh, uh, pop some popcorn. No, no, wait. We know that's not a good thing. Never mind. Yeah. Well, we, I one time had popcorn on a previous episode of the podcast. Um, and <laughs> it, it, it's not good for... Uh, for 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 you listeners at home, you you complained about my crunching and munching. So I don't know. Soft. Sn- I complained <laughs> when I went back and listened to the episode like a year later. And let's do it again. I was like, this was a cute. What the hell? I I you know what? I thought it was gonna be funny at the time. Like I was like, oh, this would be like a fun joke, like me eating popcorn during an episode. And then I listened to like yeah, like a year later, and I was like, oh god, I'm I'm obnoxious. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. Soft snacks only. Soft snacks. Yes. I think is um maybe a pizza. A nice pizza pie or a cookie. Slutty brownies. Yeah, slutty. Uh, what? <laughs> slutty brownies? Slutty brownies. Oh my God. You don't know about the slutty brownies? No. Was that just like a brownie with like a bunch of stuff in it? Okay. So it is a layer of chocolate chip cookie dough. And then you put Oreos on top. Okay. And then I put caramel sauce over that. Oh, okay. And then I put brownie batter that has Reese's peanut butter cups chopped up. And if I'm feeling extra decadent and extra slutty i add in some white chocolate chips some toffee chips and some caramel chips and you get slutty brownies what makes it slutty i don't get it all this stuff mixed together it's so decadent all right i don't get it are you slut shaming food cat also the author no okay it's one of my favorite things to make i get like begged to make these at work do you call them slutty brownies at work or do you call them something else because it's like a workplace i call them slutty brownies oh look at you look at you guys being um I don't know, vulgar at work. Ooga, I like it. <laughs> I know. Right? I love it's it. Just the worst. <laughs> All right. But yeah, like they will be like, they'll be like, Catherine, when are you making the brownies again? Yeah, they're like, Cat Halstead, the life coach, lead coach. When are you making the slutty brownies? We need them. We need them on our lips. We want to just lick them all night long. We want to <laughs> munch them. Savor the moment. We love your slutty brownies, Cat Halstead, the baker. <laughs> uh, you should open your own bakery, girl. Girl, I don't have time. Cat's cookies. Actually, I guess I do have time. I just have to have some focus. Maybe when we're in our um, Hawaiian mansion, our Magnum PI-like mansion, solving crimes and doing podcasts, I don't know, in your spare time, maybe you just want to get back to basics and you open up a little Cat's cookies, It'll be on the corner of, um, I don't know, Waikiki and... Seventh? I, I don't know uh, Hawaiian street name, so... <laughs> I don't know. I've never been to Hawaii, so yeah. I did once, but I didn't uh, take note of street names. And I didn't get. I didn't see Magnum B.I. there either. Um, but I did get to see... Uh, well, you know, I hear he looks different these days. Yeah, I hear he looks like Jay Hernandez from um, Crazy Sex... What's what's that movie that he was in with uh, Kiki Dunst? Crazy Beautiful, Life is Beautiful, Crazy Love, Love, love is Crazy. I don't know. Oh. Um, I think I'm missing that one. Oh. From my... Uh, well, Kirsten Dunst watching. You know what we'll be doing this weekend, then? We'll be having a little Kiki Corner. Let's have a Kiki. Kiki Corner. Let's have a Kiki, and we'll watch some of uh, Kiki's classics. Bring it on. Um, Spider-Man 2, and that movie that I just said that I can't remember the name of, but also stars um, the new Magnum, so ooga. Yeah. Oh, and also we got to watch um, Elizabeth Town. Oh, yeah, and um, is she in The Virgin Suicides? Yes. All right, we'll watch that, too, because I love uh, myself some Sofia Coppola. 
Ooga. Bring your dad's wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did we say what movie we're watching tonight? No, we have like barely mentioned what movie we're watching. Oh, uh, well, we're going back to the 90s again <laughs> for like the thousandth time. Um, and we're doing a movie. Because once again, Cat lives in the 90s. Yeah, uh, we're doing a movie that spoke to us. It spoke to our entire generation. It made us fall in love again with uh, our boy toy, William Shakespeare. <laughs> I was a gal pal, but I don't know. Isn't there rumors that William Shakespeare might have been a woman? Isn't that the new like hot theory? Wait, what? <laughs> Willa, Willa Shakespeare? You didn't, you didn't hear that hot theory? No, I've that, never heard that, that rumor. Oh, I don't know. I might have just made it up. <laughs> I think you made that one up. Maybe I'm thinking of Shakespeare in Love with like Gwyneth Paltrow. There are Shakespeare scholars who are like, okay, let's go find that evidence. Because there's always looking for something else to write about Shakespeare. What, what, what was the premise of uh, Shakespeare in Love? I hadn't seen it in a while. Um, Shakespeare in Love was about a woman who wanted to act. So she had to pretend to be a man. And then she fell in love with William Shakespeare. Which is ridiculous because Shakespeare was gay. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Maybe I was combining theories um, that I was thinking of Gwyneth Paltrow dressed as a, dressed as a man to act and then falling in love with uh, William Shakespeare, who is secretly gay. So maybe, all right, maybe I'm just like mixing up a like wishful thinking conspiracy corner. I don't know. Yeah. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Conspiracy corner. Conspiracy corner. All right. So we're doing um <laughs> ten things I hate about you. Did we say the movie yet? <laughs> no, that's the first time you finally mentioned it. You're like our gal pal, guy pal, boy toy. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we're doing ten things I hate about you. It's a classic, classic uh, comedy, loosely based on Taman of the Shrew, one of uh one of Willa Shakespeare's. That that's the name of our new female Willie Shakespeare, Willa, <laughs> like Willa Ford. Oh my god. Who's who's um who blamed 9/11 on her album sinking? <laughs> Speaking of conspiracy corners. <laughs> Listen, Willa Ford, it's not because of 9/11. Yeah, I do love that song though. I want to be bad. That was a, a great tune. I, I used to dance to that in my car in my uh, Honda Accord, my 1997 Honda Accord that was maroon. <laughs> maroon. Yeah, it, it, you know what? My new car, not my new car, like my existing car is also maroon. It's a Honda Civic. So, look at that theme, hmm. yeah, girl. Look at that theme. <laughs> Life is a theme. Uh, my car is blue. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, I have a blue car. Cat's got the blues. <laughs> I love my blue Jeep. All right. And I'm going to put a new headliner in it tonight. Oh, yeah. You're going to be actually like doing work on your car. So shout out to you. I'm breaking barriers. Yeah, I uh, finally went to the junkyard with my work bestie. And we found a headliner board. I was thinking I was just going to find one. I was going to have to rip the fabric off and replace it. That was going to be that bad condition. Uh-uh. We found one in, like, perfect condition. I'm picturing this, like, Thelma and Louise, like, trip to the junkyard with your uh, with your work bestie. Just listening to tunes, killing Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> just having a wild time. No, wait, 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 wait. I just oh. want to point out that my work bestie is a male. Oh, and I just remember, they didn't kill Brad Pitt. Um, um, they fucked Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. They killed somebody else. I'm sorry. I always, I always get them mixed up for some reason. I, I'm not sure that... Um, my work bestie would be interested in fucking Brad Pitt. Uh, well, maybe he could watch. Maybe he'll be watching <laughs> in the corner. Dude, no, you're making this creepy. <laughs> Sorry, work bestie. Um, I didn't mean to be. I didn't mean to make it like a creepy crawler e type thing, but I don't know. <sighs> Who knows? All right, ten things I hate about you. Yes, great movie. The classic '90s teen rom com. Yeah, starring Heath Ledger, Julia Stiles. Larissa Olnick, um, Gabrielle Union, <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, Andrew Keegan, our favorite cult leader. Yes, and um, Larry Miller, and um, who else? There's someone that like big Allison Janney. Yeah, Allison Janney. I was like, there's like a like, Daryl big... Chill Mitchell, David Leisure, Letters to Cleo, my favorite band, my favorite pop band from Boston. Shout out to them. So yeah, this is an amazing movie. Yes, it's great. And shall we talk about the landscape that was uh? March 1999, March 30th, 1999, when this movie dropped. All right, so. Yes, please. I, all right, so I was thinking about this. I was trying to think of, like, <laughs> Shakespeare in general, and I was just like, I don't know if I ever read Taming of the Shrew, but then I was like, I did. Hold on, I did, because we read it when we when I was a junior, and it was, like, right, it was right before this movie came out, and I remember we had, like, an extra credit assignment. Uh, my English teacher was like, so if anyone is going to the movies this weekend and they happen to see 10 Things I Hate About You, mm -hmm. I'll give you extra credits if you, uh, write about it and do some like a comparison and contrasting. And I didn't go to the movies that weekend, but I thought about going to the movies. I thought about getting some extra points because, um, <laughs> I don't know, junior year was a rough year for me because this is the year I was like becoming cool again because like I had friends when I was a freshman, but when I was a sophomore, I didn't. And then I suddenly had friends again when I was a junior. So I was like, f I was like, fuck school, fuck it, 
suck it in the ass yeah. and i was like i'm not um so like maybe i do need extra credit but i didn't that's my wild that's my wild story um do you have a wild story about being a junior and maybe reading tame of the shrew uh a junior no we didn't like okay the classes i took that year for like literature and stuff i took intro to lit which was like this boring ass class where we spent like the first half of the semester going over the authorian legend yeah, oh, that's dumb. That's lame. And it like, oh god, it was just forever. And then the second half of the semester was reading Raisin in the Sun. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh my god, it was the second time I read it, and then I had to read it like two more times in college. It's a play. Do you know what I mean? Great. What? If they did like a like a California raisin version of it, that would have been that would have been a lot better, I think. <laughs> so, um, it's a play and it's about this African American f- family who has like an insurance check coming in and how their life's going to be better. But then like the father, like the check gets lost in the mail, spends the money on the wrong stuff and messes everything up. Oh, okay. And there's like, um, there's like a PBS play version that starred like Danny Glover. And then like, Ooh, um, one of our favorite, um, stars of, um, the original lethal weapon series. Yes. And then, um, not to be confused with the one with Sean William Scott. That's now on TV. There's, um, another one they did a few years ago on ABC, which was like starring Puff Daddy. What? Yeah. What? Puff Daddy yeah. on a ABC made for TV movie? Yeah. Oh, oh, we. Yeah. All right. Forget uh, watching. Um, let's forget having a Kiki corner this weekend. We're not having a Kiki anymore. Oh, no. We're gonna go watch the Puff Daddy telemovie. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll have a Puff Daddy weekend. No, cats vetoing that. We'll dance in a cheese grater. <laughs> so, um, Ugh. like that's what I read the first semester. And then the second semester, I took a class called short fiction. So I read a lot of stuff by like Hemingway and Catherine Ann Porter, like all like short oh, yeah. stuff. So no Shakespeare. I did like more of the Shakespeare stuff once I got into college and had to take an actual Shakespeare class and I took a bunch of theater classes. So um FYI, Hamlet sucks. Oh. I I Hamlet was my jam. Hamlet was my jamlet. I don't know, I kinda dug that one. Fun stuff. I have had to read it so many times. They say the word strumpet. That- <laughs> I got to learn what a strumpet was from Hamlet. Yeah, I had to read it so many damn times, like I will never read it again. Oh. Well um I'm sorry. Um, maybe they, maybe, um, they have to make a cool nineties teen version of Hamlet for you to appreciate it. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe we'll have to, we'll have to go back in time. We'll get a little, get our DeLorean. We'll go back with, uh, Michael J. Fox. We'll go <laughs> back to the late nineties and I don't know, maybe we'll get, um. It would of course have to have Julia, Julia Stiles in it because she was like the nineties Shakespeare queen. What else did she do? She did, um, an Othello and there was like something else that I don't remember off the top of my oh! head. Oh! Oh yeah, the O wasn't it called O? Yeah. Just O. <laughs> oh, it had um. Was Mackay Pfeiffer in it? Yes. It was like he came off of um. ER, right? No, it was right before ER. Oh. No, Omar Epps was in something too. Maybe it was Omar Epps. Uh, it was like right after he uh, came off ER. Okay. Well, um, Julia Stiles, if you're out there, listen in right now because you know we're talking about your your signature role. Um, if you're here, there's and like I don't know, you're looking for a new project you're looking for something to do you want to write and direct something um consider hamlet and do like a fun teen version of hamlet and i don't know make it take place in the 90s uh maybe freddie prince jr can play like a like a dad yes oh my god if you didn't bring in <laughs> freddie prince jr we were gonna have words man it was gonna get like <laughs> heated because he knows how much i love julia styles and freddie prince jr together maybe Ma- maybe matthew lillard can be in it too and um in oh cisco. my god <laughs> in cisco oh my god he's like oh god this is- <laughs> like the way my body is reacting to this idea is wrong <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's coming. Um, I don't know. Call us, tweet us at Very Podcast. Um, we'll maybe we'll um we'll jam. We'll like we'll have a little like um brainstorming session. We'll get some ideas on the wall, throw some darts, and I don't know. Figure it out. Figure it out, girl. Maybe we'll have a CGI talking dog in it. You never know. You never know. <laughs> this sounds wild and crazy, and I love it. Uh, before we get into the world of ten things I hate about you and more, shall we get into um. I got the top five movies of March of 1999. You ready for this? Yes, I want to know what they are. All right, so I I had I couldn't tell if this was like the same week that Ten Things I Hate About You came out, or if it was just like overall March movies. But mm-hmm. all right, we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna go backwards from five to four. Okay. All right, we're gonna kick things off with one of the. Um, we're probably at peak Affleck right now. I think I think he's like about to um, burst over into like oversaturated. But um, mm-hmm. 
Ben Affleck and Sandy Bullock in uh, Forces of Nature. Forces of Nature. Yes. Um, ben has to get from New York to Savannah for his wedding to Bridget, played by uh, the great Maura Tierney. Uh, he has everything under control until an eccentric young woman named Sarah, uh, played by our gal pal Sandy, uh, literally falls into his life when their plane goes skidding off the runway. Uh, ben inadvertently saves Sarah's life and soon finds that he has inherited an unlikely traveling companion. Ooga. Um, I saw this in the theaters. I'm not going to lie. You did? <laughs> yeah. By accident. I think it was just like, I think I was trying to get into um, the Matrix and it was just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it was like sold out or something. And Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to like just back that up for a second. You were trying to see Keanu Reeves. Yes. And you ended up seeing Sandra Bullock. I love it. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I love it. It was serendipity. <laughs> yeah, so uh, now, now that is like, what's her face and that's um, I John Cusack. I think I was like trying to think of the term. I don't know what, what's what's the ironic. It's ironic. All right, so we're we're at that point now where it's like mm -hmm. we're like about a year or so off um, Ben Affleck's turn in Goodwill Hunting. Him and Matt Damon yeah. were like Hollywood darlings at this point, so they just started like doing like movies. So I don't know. I think this is I think this is the same year as Dogma. We got Dogma and... Um, yeah, it's probably the same year as Dogma. They were friends with Kevin Smith. Yeah. Uh, we got to see Alanis Morissette play God, which, I don't know. She is God, so I, it's an appropriate... Um, yeah. It, it is... Hold on. Is that an oxymoron, Alanis Morissette playing God because she is a God? Like, what? what's the right term that I'm looking for? I don't know. I'm not sure. I feel like you could get struck down. Oh, or is it just ironic that she plays God, but she is a God? Ooh. <laughs> I think it might be ironic. Okay. Maybe it's so it's not. All right. What is an oxymoron? I forget. Isn't that like a, um, it's like, it's saying something's like seriously funny. Is that what, what an oxymoron is? Hold on. Hold on. We're going to ask Google. I always, okay. there's, there's like certain terms I always mix up. I always forget like serendipity. <laughs> okay. Google. What is an oxymoron? According to Wikipedia, an oxymoron is a rhetorical device that uses an ostensible self-contradiction to illustrate a rhetorical point or to reveal a paradox. Oh, yeah. So, like, saying something's, like, seriously funny or, like, yeah. um, I don't know, that's the only thing that can come to mind right now. <laughs> but it works. Yeah. It works. So, I guess um, Alanis Morissette as a god is not an oxymoron. It's just ironic. No. It's just straight up ironic. Don't you think? <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> All right, you ready for the uh, the fourth top movie of March of 1999? Yes. All right. Um, I see. I saw this in the theaters too. Analyze this. Ooga. Oh my god! I totally saw that in the theaters. Yeah, this is the story of Paul v Vitti. Vitti uh, is one of New York's most powerful gangsters. He's grown up in the mob life and has been well prepared for his future responsibilities by uh, his mentor and surrogate father. Um, since his own father was gunned down years before, but when it becomes time for um, Paul Vitti to assume his role, he suddenly starts having um anxiety he can't sleep mm -hmm. he's distant and preoccupied around his wife and kids so um he has to go to um see a shrink and it's billy crystal i love yes. billy crystal yes and this this was like a weird time because like sopranos like came out around this same time yeah. and that was also about like a mob boss went to see a shrink so it was like um i don't know <laughs> it's like armageddon and um deep impact coming out at the same time yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for the uh, third top movie of March of 1999? Yes, please. I th I think um, we're going to go, you're going to get really excited. Oh, God. All right, Cruel Intentions. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Yes, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Ryan Phillippe, Selma Blair. Um, uh, Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Uh, Kirstine Baranski. Gal pals all over the place and in March of 99. Yeah, many... Many a foot, <laughs> many a foot. This is a great movie. Um, what was it based on? Dangerous Liaisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of um, like that. a lot of like teen remakes this year, I guess. <laughs> yes. Shout out to teen remakes. <laughs> you ready for the number two movie of March of 1999? I'm as ready as I can be. All right. Well, we're about to get into it shortly. It's uh, Ten Things I Hate About You. Woo! <laughs> <Ooga. laughs> uh, we'll talk about it. All right. Do you have any guesses? Of what um, the number one movie of March of 1999 is. No. I previously teased it a few, a few movies back. Oh, you did? The Matrix. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So here I am. Um, so Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves had, um, had a hot movie in the same month. Um, too bad they didn't do it together. I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> what, if, what if there's like an alternate universe where um, Forces of Nature starred Keanu Reeves and Sandy Bullock? Ooh, yeah. And Ben Affleck was in The Matrix. Dude, ben, Affleck, ben Affleck was Neo. The Matrix would not be as popular as it is. You don't think so? You don't. No. You don't think. Uh, you don't think. You know how there's like 
Batfleck. I was trying to think of like a way to neo eyes um, Bat Affleck, but I, but I but I couldn't think of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When my five year old nephew sees him as Batman and goes, he's Ooh. not Batman. It, all right. You know. All right. Um. And don't forget, he. This is probably around the time. This is what before he did Daredevil. Oh yeah, this is like way before he did Daredevil. Like he's not even. Yeah, and like think about how much he sucked in that. That is true. Like, because th- this is like when we still liked Ben Affleck. This is like he. Yeah. He was probably dating like Gwyneth. This is before <laughs> we knew that he was raging, gambling, alcoholic. Who is he? Was he linked D-bag. with Gwyneth around this time? Uh, yes, I think so. Oh uh, yeah, because Gwyneth was on the fallout from his uh, from her failed relationship with Brad Pitt, and she just needed a new yes. leading man to grasp grasp onto. This is around. This is bef- yeah. This is around the time he's with Gwyneth. She's getting over Brad Pitt, who's going with uh, Jennifer Aniston. Ben Affleck's star is rising. Mm-hmm. It's um, he's on the rise. He's going to be in a many many a blockbusters are coming. He's about to boil over. And then, I don't know. You know what? Then he starts dating J-Lo and it all goes to hell. Hot take. Anytime that um, Ben Affleck starts dating someone, I start losing interest in the um, in the actress. Really? Is that, you think that's true? It could be. Like, I could see it. Cause... I definitely went through like a dry spell with Jennifer Garner for a while. I was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Don't know. Jennifer Garner, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You're smarter than this, sweetie. Yeah, why are you doing this movie? Why? Why? Are you... But you know what? She, Jennifer Garner, is probably the best thing that ever happened to Ben Affleck. <laughs> um, she got and she got him um like McDonald's on his way to rehab. <laughs> like she got him to go to rehab again. Um, but hold on though, she did do that. She's doing that. I haven't seen it, but she's doing that like Lena Dunham show on HBO right now. On that what show? That Lena Dunham show that's on HBO right now. Uh, yeah. Lena fucking Dunham. Stop promoting this bitch. She needs to just, like, go the fuck away, people. Yeah, she needs to go the way of, um, I don't know, Janine Turner and just disappear. Yeah, she actually, she needs to even do, she just needs to go live in fucking Alaska. With Sarah Palin. Uh, <laughs> do a reality show with her and Sarah Palin. Dude, I don't think Sarah Palin d- deserves that. <laughs> I would, you know what? Maybe, maybe I would, like, see that. If it was on, like, A&E, it was Sarah Palin and Lena Dunham. Sarah Palin teaching Lena Dunham about the world. Ooh, yeah, I would watch that. Bring it on, Annie. Maybe they can get Tina Fey to visit for a few days and Amy Poehler. <laughs> and they're all teaching Lena Dunham about the world because Lena Dunham knows oh, jack yeah. shit. Celebrities We Hate teaches Lena Dunham the world. But um, I, I, we don't hate uh, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. just want to point that out. But. Um, I do hate Amy Poehler. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. I just don't find her funny. I think she just... She thinks she's so funny that she doesn't try. I can see that. Uh, you know what? I love her on Parks and Recreations, and I love her as the mom on Mean Girls. But yeah, I, I guess I see your point. Like she just stopped trying to actually be funny, and she's just there. Yeah, and like I don't know, it's like she hosted the um like the the Golden Globes too many times. <laughs> it's like one and done, girl. And uh, no more SNL alums or current cast members are allowed to host awards show. Do you understand me? CBS yeah. or ABC? Whoever. NBC. NBC. What the hell? How did I not know what channel? Whoever. Whomever, whomever it may concern. <laughs> yeah, that, that's our hot take. Um, so yeah, w- how about celebrities that is well hated? Teach, teaches Lena Dunham how to, I don't know. Navigate life. I, I'd watch that. Um, well, here's the thing. And then she'd write an essay about, oh, how they're so wrong. And be like, bitch, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Stop writing essays. <laughs> how about that? Just stop writing essays, girl. Just stop. Actually, you know what? Lena Dunham should just be in jail for her sex crimes. Her what? Her, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her sex crimes. We, we, we won't get into it. This is not the show where we talk about Lena Dunham's sex crimes. So we'll, we'll move on with life. Let's move on. All right. Uh, so that'll be our yeah. other podcast in which we talk about um, Lena Dunham. <laughs> Or maybe we'll save it for when we do an episode of Girls. We are never doing an episode of Girls. I don't know. There, you know what? As much as I dislike Lena Dunham, I really did enjoy Girls. It was a great show. But I like I enjoyed the non-Lena Dunham stuff the most. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cat Halstead, the author. I lost you. Yeah, I'm here. I forgot that you can't see me. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me try that again. Do you feel better now? I do. <laughs> okay. I just like to see your reaction to like when I say certain things. So... <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, um, podcast secret: we do this on video chat, but sometimes Cat shuts off the video portion because I don't know. Maybe she's like changing or something. Maybe she's taking off her top to put on a new top. <laughs> yes, I'm sitting here getting naked in front of you, Patrick. Right. <laughs> I don't know. No, it was because the video connection would be wonky. Yeah. Sometimes, um, we lose we lose connection, and I don't know. We have to play the Price is Right theme song while we like try to figure <laughs> out stuff. And sometimes I edit it out completely, so I don't know. You never know what you're gonna get. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. You might get Cat Halstead holding a piece piece of fabric that looks like the <laughs> wallpaper that uh, Zach Braff leans against in the Garden State. Oh, I love that movie. Shout out to the Garden State. All right. 
we'll we'll do that one day. We'll get to that. We'll get to that one when it's okay. um Natalie Portman month here at the podcast. Okay. So All right. Ten things I hate about you. What else do you want to talk about from nineteen ninety nine? Uh well nineteen ninety nine was a wild time to be alive. Um we were scared about Y two K. It was coming, coming for us. Yes, we were scared about Y two K. Why is UK? What if it happened? We wouldn't have been able to talk to each other. I know. We would have had to like do like cassette tapes <laughs> to each other. <laughs> like, oh just, my god, it would just, have been weird. Distribute them on the Pony Express. <laughs> that's how uh, that's how we'd get our podcast out there. <laughs> It'd be like uh <laughs> we had just had to like make copies manually and just ship them off to our friends snail mail because <laughs> I don't know, technology ceased to exist. Oh my god, could you imagine if people had actually done there probably were people who did stuff like that. Oh yeah. I, uh, I um used to make mixtapes i mean we were alive in the yeah. 90s so like mixtapes were like a f- I, a fun thing it was yeah. like, fun to sit down and like make a mixtape and like now you just like click a bunch of buttons and it's done you like that like back then you had to like make sure you either had the right cassette set up going on or the right radio station on and you got the song right when it started yeah you only had 30 minutes you only had like 30 minutes each yeah. side so you had to like be very um so when you like you know you did like 20 uh, five minutes and you only had like room for one more song you had to be careful you had to pick one that was quick yeah you didn't want to do a song that was too long and then i don't know sometimes you'd have to try to find like filler just to like fill like the last few seconds just to Mm -hmm. ease you into the next side and then like even like cds cd mixes it was like Mm -hmm. you know 76 minutes so like you were still like limited to time and i I don't know now we have like spotify then you had to like actually have the songs downloaded and they had to actually be the right song yeah and then like now you just have like you can just make like a 76 song playlist and like send it to your crush and i don't know like you might you don't even think about it anymore like oh yeah i'll just throw that on there because why the fuck not girl why the fuck not yeah um do you have any hot hot things about 1999 1999 let's see that was March 99, we were juniors in high school. I was still trying to figure out my place in Colorado. Oh, yeah, you were freshly, weren't you, like, freshly uh, transplanted there? Yeah, we, like, moved. You were just alone in Shortly a- before the start of school year. You were alone so. in this new world. You had your East Bay backpack on, just walking around <laughs> with your initials. No, I never had anything cheesy like Catherine that. Catherine Elizabeth Halstead, K-E-H. And all, like, I just remember trying to, like, figure out where I was supposed to uh, be, who I, yeah. who I was friends with. And there was always, like, stupid stuff happening. Like... Was this? Uh, I think this is around the time my friend got outed. Oh. Yeah. That must have been, because this is like a, 1999 was like a wilder time. So this, that, must, that must have been like. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, that's why when I like, I go on Tumblr and I see these kids, they're like, oh, you guys just, it's like, you guys don't understand what people went through back in the day. Like, you could just get outed as Okay, and like your family kicks you out and everything goes to hell. I mean, it still happens today, but I... It does, but there's more accepting people today. Yes, we live in an accepting world. Uh, we have we have like Netflix series, like Everybody Sucks or Everything Sucks that, you know, deals with characters like this. Yeah. Shameless, the show Shameless and all kinds of things. So it's great. Uh, welcome to the Brave New World. Welcome to post yeah. Y2K. We survived. We survived mm-hmm. the apocalypse. <laughs> We survived everything, and we're in this brave new world. All right. Yes. I think we should get into uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. Yes. Maybe get into the world. Maybe talk about some of the actors. We- um, who knows? Who knows where we, we where we will digress? We, I don't know. We, I have a lot of things I wrote <laughs> That's down. That's always scary. That have nothing to do with the movie, so who knows? Okay. I think you should take us into the movie. Just let's start with that, and I don't know. Who knows where we'll end up? We might end up <laughs> talking about Save the Last Dance. <laughs> Also starring Never Julie Stiles. <laughs> so uh, this takes place at Padua High School in Seattle, Washington. Yes. Um, gloomy Seattle. Um, it always rains. Which, okay, could we talk about this for a yes. hot second? How this movie, it is always freaking sunny. Um, like, there's not a gloomy day I heard, all right. in this movie. I Hot scoop. I, had a, I heard a hot scoop, a hot Seattle scoop. So one of my friends from work um, went to Seattle a few months ago. Mm-hmm like a month or two ago. And she commented that it was always sunny there. And her Uber driver told her that was just like a myth that um, local Seattleites tell people. So they don't like a bunch of people don't move there. <laughs> okay. So like my uh, stepbrother and his wife used to live in Seattle. Yep. And it was always gloomy. Oh. That's what they've told me. And like when they first came, moved back to Colorado and they first moved out to Colorado, my um, oldest nephew hated it here because it was so sunny. Oh, um, hold on. So... 
Is it a myth or is it not a myth? Um, do we have? All right. Um, I also have a friend who used to live in Seattle, and from my understanding, what he has told me is it is usually pretty gloomy. All right. Well, I don't know. Maybe this Uber driver is wrong. Maybe this Uber driver is trying to get a lot of people to move there. So who knows? So um, maybe if any of our listeners out there, if you're from Seattle, if you live near the Space Needle, uh, send us a tweet at Very Podcast and let us know if it's always gloomy or not, or if this is. I don't know. Yeah. Debunk this. Uh, sh- or should we get the, our friends at Mythbusters on the line? Shall we call them? Yeah, I <laughs> have them on speed dial. so we can. You have them on speed dial? Yeah, call them up. Call them up real quick. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's always sunny in Seattle in this movie. And I don't know, maybe, maybe 1999 was like a really sunny year for Seattle. Who knows? Maybe 1999, 1998, whenever they actually filmed this. Yeah. So maybe it was like an extra sunny year. Um, lots, of, lots of sunshine going on. Um, the gloomy '90s were were fading out. Real World Seattle had wrapped because mm-hmm. I, I think there's like a cameo of like Real World Seattle in this uh, episode too. Like, they... yes, I thought of. <laughs> I just realized that I was like, oh, they're watching Real World Seattle. Duh. One, one of the characters is watching that. I, I was like, oh, oh no, you know what? They were watching the Real World, and I said, I wonder if it's the Real World Seattle. And they showed the Space Needle, and I was like, oh, it is. Yeah, they showed the fisher the market, and oh yeah, I forgot about the fish market. Shout out to the fish market, <laughs> which was like right by the loft. Oh yeah, shout out to the loft. Um, was... That was, like, the first real world with, like, a casting twist. Was this the season with Irene? Yes. It, yes. All right. So, hot scoop. This is a hot scoop right here. So, around the time uh, Hurricane Irene uh, was going up the East Coast, was battling towards Massachusetts, but to uh, annihilate us, but to blow us off the map, um, my, my friend, Kristen, she tweeted on Twitter, this is, like, 2010 2009 when twitter was like brand new and like a wild time and she um she tweeted about hurricane irene and she she tweeted that it reminded her of the real world irene and the actual irene from the real world replied to her and invited her on her to- like her radio talk show for like a hot minute so she got to go on and like talk about i don't know like the magic of the internet so i don't know i thought that was fun she got to like talk to irene for like five minutes on her radio show wow this was like a, it was like a podcast Ooh. so i don't know maybe, maybe we'll wild. tweet irene maybe it should come on our podcast because um yeah hot scoop we are talking about doing the real world soon so i don't know we are it is on the list all right so um i think we were gonna do um Season three, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think we said we're going to do that season, but I don't know. Maybe Irene will come on and just give us like her insights on season three. And then, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that's good. Come on the show, Irene. Come on, Irene. To the tune of Come on, Eileen. All right. Go on. Tell us about uh, 10 Things Ahead But You. So this is not like a two-hour episode. Okay, so they go to Padua High School, which is like, this is where you get the Shakespeare stuff. Like where Taming of the Shoe takes place is in a village called Padua. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just your normal 1990s average high school. You've got all your different clips. Now, here's the thing I will say is that in different parts of the country, you're going to get different clips. Not every high school has the same clip. I highly doubt you had a group of cowboys in Massachusetts, right? Um, no. The only time I ever saw a cowboy was on the real world. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> and the Marlboro Man. I'm sorry, and the Marlboro Man. And um, I know one time Garth Brooks came to Boston. I think. <laughs> so here's like I grew up in New Jersey. They did not have cowboys at my high school. I mean, we had like no, there were no co- like that's the part of New Jersey I grew up in. That's for sure because I grew up in like Richie Rich, like New York City suburb. Hold on, though. I will say like, isn't uh, Washington State like next to like Montana and stuff? And yeah, I know. I feel like there's a lot of like ranches out there. So I'm like, you know, maybe there's cowboys there. And I don't know, maybe some of them want to just get out of this farm life and just wanted to, I don't know, they didn't want to wrangle cattle. They wanted to just go to the city and work at Starbucks, maybe just be a barista, maybe write a novel. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, different parts of the country, you get different kinds of clicks. You know what I mean? I mean, there's the normal ones you get, like the jocks and cheerleaders. There's always, like, the yuppie group. Maybe this is like, maybe this was a joke. I don't know. Maybe um, part of the joke was, hey, let's just throw, like, a cowboy click in here. And Well, like, here's the thing. When I went to school in Colorado, we had cowboys. Maybe the writer of the movie. That's what I'm saying is you're getting different clicks because you get that. You're not listening to me. <laughs> it's different parts of the country. You get different kinds of like click back in 1999 i don't think there were that many high schoolers who were coffee 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 you know what i mean uh, but in seattle it makes sense because it's kind of like the coffee capital yeah just chilling at starbucks with your like heavy ass laptop or the seattle's best or whatever you know yeah yeah getting so a, that's what um, i'm venti. saying is you get kind of like your average clicks and then you also get kind of like area we got uh hose in different area codes 
So yeah. Introduce us to the to the story. The story of Ten Things I Hate About You. So the story is you have New Kid Cameron. He gets he gets there and immediately sees this woman, this girl Bianca, and is just head over heels in love with her. Even though he hasn't spoken to her, he just sees that she's this cute girl, but he has been hit with Cupid's arrow. Yes, and she's played by um, La- Larissa Olnick. Is that how you say her name? Yes, Olnick. Uh, you may know her from The Secret World of Alex Mack, and she was also in a few episodes of Mad Men. And that's all I know. That's all I know her from. <laughs> um, she did uh, the Babysitter's Club movie. Oh, she did? Yeah. And then uh, she also, what else was it? It was, um, she's done some Lifetime Christmas stuff. Oh, she's one of those gals. Yeah. yeah. She's, yeah, she's a Lifetime gal, not a Hallmark gal. I really like her. I don't know. Like, uh, like I was watching this and I was just like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I wish, like, I wish she was a thing. Like, I wish, like, she popped and, I don't know, she had, like, a string of fun movies. Like, I don't know, like, maybe she could have been, like, a little, like, rom-com darling, done a movie with, like, Ashton. Well, I feel like by the time she was really old enough to star in those rom-coms, like the adult rom coms, they were out of style. Uh, yeah, because we kind of got that like era where like you know like now, Sex in the City was over, so now we're getting like a lot of like Sarah Jessica Parker movies. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, a lot of them weren't that great. Like Failure to Launch. They really <laughs> <No>. weren't. <sighs> like the rom com was dying. It was a dying breed. Yeah, the rom com. Did Sarah Jessica Parker kill the rom com? Ooh, conspiracy corner. Did she? I think she might have. She might have. Because you know, what? like I think, like in in essence. Sex in the City was a rom com. It was just a long rom com, and well, if you look at the movies, the movies are both basically, or however many there are, are just like long ass seasons. Yes, just put together. And we're we're coming off like that Sex in the City high, and I don't know. Now she's doing like non Sex in the City stuff, and I don't know. People saw her in it, and they were like they wanted Carrie Bradshaw, but we were just getting like a non Carrie Bradshaw, and mm-hmm. we want Carrie. We don't want I don't know whoever else she played. We don't want these new characters and. I don't know. I guess uh, the audience didn't take to it, and all her, uh, all those rom coms failed at the box yeah. office, and they failed to launch new ones. <laughs> exactly. And like you know what? Even like Matthew McConaughey was like doing, like trying to do them too. So he was also in failure to launch. I don't know. Like just didn't work. I guess I don't know. He Matthew McConaughey though. He he was doing the good on the rom coms, and then the rom coms died after failure to launch. So Sarah Jessica Parker killed the rom-coms. Yes, and now... Uh, and now Kat watches Hallmark Channel every week trying to get a good, decent rom-com. Yes. And hey, every once in a while, Julia Stiles shows up. So sh- shout out to her for, I don't know, doing something every now and then. So. <laughs> Sorry, La- Larissa yeah. Olnick. Um, we miss you. Come back. Come back to us. I don't know, do a fun movie. Maybe maybe do a Marvel movie. Maybe I'll get you back in the spotlight. Come to Hallmark. You can chill with Rachel Lee Cook and Julia Stiles. You can, but... And Danica McKellar and Lacey Chabet. I don't know. I kind of want to see... Whatever her last name is. I kind of want to see her on the big screen. I kind of want to see her like in a big role, like back, back. Yeah. And you didn't even know you wanted her back. I don't know. She could be like, um, I don't know, like maybe play like one of Agent Carter's like grandnieces or something. Uh, oh, don't tease me with Agent Carter. There's, there's, That's evil. There's got to be some uh, other female Marvel characters out there that we've yet to dip into. <laughs> Maybe play another Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Play the Black Widow. Fuck Scarlett Johansson. I'm tired of Scarlett Johansson. Speaking of failure to launch, like <laughs> she, <laughs> she can't do anything at all. <laughs> like she was great in. Uh, You're thinking nothing. <laughs> I don't even know what she's good in. <laughs> you know what? I remember when the event, the first Avengers came out. I said, you know what, Scarlett Johansson's all right in this. That was like my review of her. Yeah, but like she's all right. <laughs> she's not someone who I'm like, oh yeah, and everybody's like, oh, she should get a movie all to herself. And I'm like, to do what? Yeah, she's very deadpan. To do what? I don't know. She just does. She never feel like I never feel like she's like committed to the role. Like everyone like said she was like great in um yeah. What's the movie that she did with Bill Murray? Lost in Translation. Uh yeah. And I don't know, like, but like she just played like a very subdued character and i don't know didn't work didn't work for me sorry sorry scar joe i guess you're all right in the marvel movies but we'd rather see larissa olnick larissa olnick for black widow 2019 i'm not checking our twitter comments after this episode post man all right um hold on hold on we just brushed over this what can we talk about how the main characters in this movie are named patrick and cat no we haven't talked about that and i feel like we were <laughs> trying to avoid that for as long as possible we i meant to bring this up at like the top of the hour but <laughs> <laughs> so like 45 minutes ago yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah so the main characters so, are named cat and patrick but i will i i want to um spoil this for you we are the original pat and cat because we were friends before this movie came out 
Yes. We are not the new Cat and Pat. They are the new Cat and Pat. They are the new Cat and Pat. Yes. Do not accept imitation. But we are not in love with each other. <laughs> no, we're just like, we're just like business partners. <laughs> I'm, um... I'm Don Draper. You're Peggy Olson. Why do I have to be Peggy? Can't I be Joan? You're Holland Taylor in um, Bosom Buddies and I'm Tom Hanks. <laughs> How about that? Okay, Holland Taylor kicks ass, so I'll take it. Yes. So you're the fun lady boss and I'm the inept male subordinate. <laughs> that, that that sounds right. Yes. So shout out to Girl Boss. Okay. Okay, All can right. we talk about why we wanted to do this movie? Yes. So it is because the main characters are named Cat and Pat. Yes. And um, one day, one of my friends, Holly, was like, just randomly tweets, I ship Cat and Pat together. And I did like a double take at the screen. I was like, excuse me? I was like, what the hell? Like, there was no like um, hashtag to give any kind of context to what she was tweeting about. And I was like, girl, what are you talking about? Like, tell me you're not meaning me and Patrick. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. I was watching 10 Things I Hate About You. I was like, okay, thank God. That was a little weird. And she was referring to the movie? She's like, but now that I think about it, I was like, no, don't. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, creepy corner. Like, no. That's like um, that's like walking in on your sister in the shower bath. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, Kenna's lady parts. <laughs> like, they existed. <laughs> I didn't know he had boobs all this time. Like, I can see them through your shirt, but I didn't know, like, they were actually there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like, it's like you take off your shirt and you're just like, like a Ken doll. Thank you. Now the internet thinks I'm like a Ken doll. <laughs> or a Barbie doll. Like a Barbie vagina. <laughs> but I will not be posting proof to reiterate that, so. Hashtag Barbie veg. <laughs> all right. So let's get to the plot before, like, we scare away half the audience. Because we're already, like, 50 minutes in and all we talked about is, like, Seattle coffee and cowboys and fucking school. <laughs> <laughs> So Barbie vagina. The basic premise is you so you've got uh Kat Stratford and Bianca Stratford, and they are not allowed to date until they graduate high school. It is well known that their father is basically crazy and will not allow them to date. And I kinda don't blame him. Yeah, um like all the guys in the school suck. Uh yeah. The the guys in the school Even Cameron. The guys in the school are awful. Like they're that it's it's that type of world where like boys have bets. Like, you know what? I bet you a hundred dollars that like yeah. I can You can get this girl into bed. Yeah, that type of world. It's it's like a little like a sick bet. <laughs> it's um Yeah, it's just the men treat women yeah. like objects. You know, they're just prom like you know and it's like the thing where it's like, you know what? I'm going to take you to the prom, and, like, the only reason I'm taking you to the prom is because, like, I'm going to get laid in the back of my cool car. Or at least you think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's like, you know what? No no woman wants to have sex in a car. Let's let's be real. It's, it's just, Am I right? Am I right, Cat? Said? It's just not fun. There's not a lot of room to maneuver. No, it's like, you know what? Like a, Even if you're, like, in an SUV. Yeah, it's like, you know what? A car is maybe good for a hand job, maybe a blowy, but... Actual penetration sex is it's difficult. Like, okay. Also, he drives a freaking sports car. So it's not like there's any room at all to do anything. No, it's like, you know, to get in the back seat, you gotta like, you gotta open the front door, like move the front seat forward and then like crawl yeah. in. And then it's like very, it's like a very tight squeeze in there. And I don't know, like, where are you gonna put your legs? Yeah. And it's like, all right, so you got like two people trying to like balance themselves and it, it's, it's gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, you know what, is it like, do they have like a, like a lover's lane in Seattle? Like, is there like a quiet? place they could drive to i'm sure they have something maybe they can go in front of kirk cobain's house oh, i want to go have sex in front of kirk cobain's house yeah that sounds safe because like isn't there like like a like a secluded park like near his house i remember seeing that one time there was like a bench that people always go on like they always know. like write their names on it because they want to like write their names on Kirk's maybe. bench. it's like where he wrote smells like teen spirit or something he used to fiddle his guitar out there i don't most of what i know so, about seattle is secondhand knowledge and from like movie singles yeah and twilight <laughs> Does, doesn't twilight take place <laughs> fuck twilight Oh, yeah, singles. I forgot what singles takes place there. How do you forget about singles? We've gone over this. It's the greatest <laughs> movie. Oh. I don't know. Team Reality Bites, girl. Team RB. <laughs> singles. <laughs> We're going to fight yeah. about this till we die. We're going to be, like, living in our Hawaiian mansion, We're gonna be like fighting about this. And this is what's going to, like, the cops are going to show up and be like, are you guys okay? We're like, yeah, we're just continuing this fight we've had for, like, 40 years. Yeah, we get we got a just domestic dispute. I like I threw a remote control at your forehead because you said that fucking Matt Dillon was better than um Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke, yeah, I couldn't think of his name. And I was like, "Fuck you, Ethan Hawke is better." And like I threw like a fucking my, my Apple remote at you and you got like a little dent in your forehead, you became a trauma. We had to go to the you had to go to the ER. Yeah, cuz I'm old you and bleed. <laughs> you like fell, broke broke your hip. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> all over all over uh, Matt Dillon and Ethan Hawke who were like Long gone celebrities by this point. They're like long gone. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Um, the sisters aren't allowed to date. And, you know, this kind, let's be real, in a way that kind of makes them more attractive to people. Oh, yeah. If, like, someone's unattainable, like, you you appreciate the thrill. Like, you like the mm-hmm. thrill of the hunt. So Bianca is definitely the one everybody wants to hunt because Kat is a bitch. And I don't fucking blame her. We'll get to it later, but Kat has, like, a little, like, has history. And, yeah. Um, so, yeah, she she's a little bitchy. She's... She kind of, like, pushes boys around. She, like, pushes them into lockers. She's kind of like a bully, but, like, in a fun way. Like a fun bully. <laughs> but in the, like, just stop harassing me with Yeah. But, like, you know what? Like, I would hang out with her. Like, if it was, like, Kat or Bianca, I would totally hang out with Kat. Like, we, we go to, like, cool clubs. We see Save Ferris together and Letters to Cleo. Yeah, like, I fucking love Kat. We jam out to Here and Now. Yeah, she's great. Like, I don't know. Like, she, like, despite her, like, being a bitch and maybe only having, like, one or two friends, like... Mm-hmm. She knows what she wants. Like, she's... Well, here's the thing. I'd rather have one or two friends than a bunch of people who are not actually my friends hanging around. Yeah, exactly. And, like, she's a little... Like, she's creative. She's a creative type. She plays guitar. Mm-hmm. She, she writes music and poetry. She's into art. And, I don't know. She's... She... Basically, Kat is the cooler version of me. Yeah, and she has, like... Um, she has goals. Like, she wants to go to move to the East Coast and... I don't know, just mm-hmm. live in New York or something. She just doesn't want to be and stuck in Seattle. and She wants to go to New York and hang out with, like, um, like I don't know, late 90s stars. <laughs> she wants to be part of that world. She wants to usher in the new millennium in New York City. She wants to be there for Y2K. Yes, I'm sure that's exactly what she's thinking about. It's, it's a couple months later. It's uh, December 31st. She's a freshman in college, and she's just at Times Square. Her first uh, her first New Year's in Times Square, and she's freezing, but you know what? She loves it. She's, she's enjoying her time. She's... Uh, mm-hmm. D- Dick Clark is still alive and he's rocking. He's rocking into New Year's Eve and she's there. It's before Shout- Ryan Seacrest took over. Yeah, she's she's clutching a warm cup of coffee. But it's not good coffee because it's New York coffee. It's not uh, Seattle's best. Yeah. But you know what? It's keeping her hands warm so she doesn't care. I mean, though New York, you know, does have the that's, that's, world's best cup of coffee, according to Elf. Uh, <laughs> that is... <laughs> I don't know. I don't think of New York and I think of coffee. I think of like pizza and... um. Oh, I don't know. You know what? But uh, on on speaking of um, New York and the show Girls, uh, they do go to a lot of coffee houses on that show. Uh, so maybe, maybe maybe Elf has some accuracy to it. Mm. Hot scoop. Okay, so the girls aren't allowed to date. It's widely known, but Cameron sees Bianca, and he just has to have her. But he doesn't know how to go about. It. So what's his friend David Crumultz's character? Um, he, yeah. So. I don't remember his name. We'll just call him David Crumultz. Bernard. We'll call him Bernard. Bernard. Is that his name? No, because um, he he played Bernard Ow. on uh, the Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. That's right. right. And, uh, he... It's that or we remember him as the man who killed Lucy on ER. Or uh, he was on, wasn't he on Numbers, the yeah. CBS math crime show? <laughs> Shout out to math crime. Yeah, he's the guy who killed Lucy on ER. So David Crummels is kind of like, he's the, the tour guide of the school because um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is new, <laughs> new to town. So he's kind of, mm-hmm. you know, giving him the uh, lowdown. He's giving him like the Seattle lowdown. He see, um, JGL sees Bianca and David Crummels is like, all right, she's unattainable, dude. Um, you, like, n- she's the ice queen. Like no one can go near, well, actually, Kat's the ice queen. She's the ice queen sister. You can't go near her. Yeah. Daddy Dearest is like, no, no. Um, Daddy Dearest will not even allow, like, mm-hmm. anyone to even go near her. It's like, you know what? You know, like, the Catholic school dances have that, like, ruler, like, the 12-inch ruler rule, like, when you're dancing? Larry Miller, the dad's rule, is, like, an entire neighborhood <laughs> between them. Yeah, you're not, like, allowed near each other. He will make her put on a pregnancy empathy pad. Yeah. She's walking around like she's pregnant. Just to remind you. I'm surprised she doesn't have like a chastity belt. Let's be real. And Bianca's kind of like sneaky too. Like she she like she's flirty. She's at that age, but she like like a freshman maybe. She's flirty, but she's not as sneaky as she thinks she is. Because Bianca always catches her. She tries. Like she tries to be like you know like when you're just young and naive and you think you're sneaky but you're not. That that's Bianca. So that, Hundred percent. Sneaky spice. That would be our spice girl name. Sneaky spice. Love it. Shout out. Okay. So Okay, so Cameron wants her, he tries to be her French tutor, even though um, he doesn't speak French, like, at all. And he, you know, somehow gets that. I don't know how, like, you cannot speak French and become somebody's tutor, but hey. You know what? Whatever. He probably, like, went to um, Barnes & Nobles that night, got, like, a French for Dummies book, read, like, I don't know, the first two chapters, and was like, all right, this is probably enough. This is probably enough to um, win over... Uh, Bianca. Yeah. It, it seemed like it, it seemed like it was working. It was working, but then we find out there's a new rule. There is a new rule that 
Bianca can date when Kat dates. Yes. So when if Kat goes out on a date, Bianca can go out on a date. Yes. This is where the game happens. So now this turns into like a bet. This is where things get real. So Cameron is like, all right, we need to get Kat mm-hmm. a date. And they, they like, they, I don't know, they like audition a bunch of um, like dudes in the school. Who are just like creepy. Yeah. Like they're all like, no, like they will not go near the ice queen. They want nothing to do with her. They know what she's like. They don't want to get shoved into a locker or get like ran down. They have probably all been attacked by her already for trying to date her. Yeah. They don't want to be a subject of one of her poetry slams. <laughs> they know. Yeah. But they do find, they do find one dude, Patrick, Patrick Verona. Is that, was that the name? Yes, that is the name. Played by Heath Ledger, the late Heath Ledger. And like, I guess this is like, was this his first US role? Is that what I read? This was like the role that made us fall in love with him. Yes. yes. Like he had been like a star in like Australia for a while. Mm-hmm. Been in a few things, a um, few TV shows there, a few movies there. But this was like his first breakthrough role in the US. This is the one that I don't know, caught our attention, caught our eyes. We were like, ooh, who's that? Launched a million or so crushes. Yeah, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Cat Hall said, the author. Is that? Who's that guy with that long hair and those eyes and just that accent? Oh, my God. Tall, large penis. Who is that? Who is that, Cat Hall said? Oh, my God. Who is it? We're not going down that road again. They're like, that's Heath Ledger. That's Heath Ledger. It's middle of the day, Patrick. It's middle of the day. Patrick, that's Heath Ledger. <laughs> have respect for Heath Ledger. <laughs> So they have to find, so Patrick will do it if they pay him, but they have no money. So they have to find an investor and they find Joey. So they need, they need to bankroll it. Played by Andrew Keegan, our favorite cult leader. Okay. So we got to get into our cult corner right now because you. How do you not know about this? I've told you about this before. I don't know about this. (laughs) You said something about this to me. I mean, I've I've heard it, but I don't know the deets. So you sent me like a DM like 10 minutes before we recorded, which I don't like I like fumbled my phone I didn't know what to do I was like trying to do hot research and I, I couldn't so, like I was just like well this is way too much information so we're going into Kel Corner I just said we get to talk about our favorite cult leader right. Andrew so, Keegan so Andrew Keegan the star okay. of Party of Five the star no he wasn't on Party of Five he was on Seventh Heaven oh Seventh Heaven that's no, right and the star of 10 Things I Hate About You um, and uh, Camp Nowhere Camp Nowhere uh, some ABC sitcom that Last maybe a season or two. Yeah, so Andrew Keegan, I don't know, he he was a bankable star in the late 90s. He was a rising star. We thought the world of him. He was like that nice clean cut boy who could have a little edge. Yeah, he had a nice tan. Very cute. And All the girls loved him. <laughs> they wanted to run their hands through his hair. You know, he had that similar haircut to Ryder Strong. He was like, um, he was always winning the fuck category in like late 90s fuck Mary kills. Yes. Obviously. Like the fuck champion, <laughs> like 10 time fuck champion. <laughs> and a few years yeah. ago, uh, it came out that he started a religious organization, um, which is like this new age meditation center in like Venice Beach. They were selling kombucha or whatever it is called, that like cabbage drink. Oh, that like that weird tea. Yeah, that weird gross tea that is just vile and no, nobody. I refuse to believe anybody actually likes it because it's so gross. Um, you know what? I got, I got one. I got like a mm-hmm. um a lemon flavored one, and I didn't mind it. It's like fermented, right? Isn't it like fermented tea? Yeah, it's like this fermented tea, and his group was selling it to try and pay the rent on their space because they were gonna get kicked out, and like it had gone bad. Like the t- the tea went bad, or like the business went bad. Uh, so was it like tainted? Like yeah, the what? tea went bad. Yeah, it was like tainted because they didn't do it properly oh. for like. Was there like a mass hallucination or something? Selling it, you know they. Well, because I know if um there's like a warning on kombucha that says like that during the fermenting process, like it may contain alcohol. <laughs> yeah, so basically everybody got drunk off this. And they didn't like they weren't expecting to. And they didn't have the license to sell it <laughs> either. Oh, so like he it was like he was selling alcohol then at that point, right? Yeah, basically. And like it's just like this weird He's like a moonshiner. Yeah, it's like this weird new agey <laughs> cult out in Venice Beach. There's um clips from that uh show with um Beverly Mitchell, Jody Sweeten, and um what's her face who played Al on Step by Step. Yeah, it's what's that like pop network show? Like the one that's like former former star it's like role models or something like, yeah like yeah. i forget what it's called. hollywood darlings <laughs> yes yeah, hollywood darlings okay so like the show's like it's set up like a reality show but it's kind of scripted but in one episode uh beverly and what's her face go to this 
center that Andrew runs and it is super awkward. And I, I refuse to believe that Andrew is just goofing around in this. I think it was 100% this is what Andrew does every day. So you think this was like a commercial for like, this was his commercial for the um, institution or whatever? <laughs> like he's like, I'm going to get TV exposure for this. We're going to get new members. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was weird. It was like this weird... New agey hippie stuff that even Caitlin from Big Brother Twenty wouldn't touch. Like, is, is it are they into like essential oils and crystals? Like, what's the? Yeah, like there was all kinds of weird meditations, and Beverly Mitchell sitting there like, wait, are we really doing this? Is like really awkward. Can we get out of here? Ooh. Yeah, I bet you like um, Andrew Keegan probably like thought he was doing like an ad spot for it. Like, ooh, this is a great way to promote it. And then he like yeah. saw it like six months later and was like, oh, they're making fun of me. <laughs> like if he even saw it, because I feel like he probably doesn't have cable. Oh, yeah. He seems like that person now. Like, oh, you know what? I don't believe in TV. And I don't stream anything. I just believe in my my, my mind. I just want to sit in a room with my yes. kombucha tea, meditate, get, I don't know, like have spirits channel into my mind. Maybe talk to like yes. the spirit of Heath Ledger. Oh, God. Like, who knows? Who knows what he thinks? I don't know. Does he even have a Twitter? Does Andrew Keegan have a Twitter? I believe he does. Ooh, let's find it. Let's, let's try to... Let's find it. I'm going to read his last tweet. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. Let's see what you can find. I don't know if he has a Twitter. I think he does. Oh, hold on. There is an Andrew Keegan, but he doesn't He doesn't have a blue checklist, and it says that he's an actor, producer, and a soul surfer, so I don't know if this is... Actually... Yeah, that's him. That's him? Okay. Um, the, he, the last thing he retweeted... Yes, because the picture... Okay. The pictures are so uh, him. It seems like he's a big retweeter. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He he tweeted like in, I don't know, he hasn't tweeted since like 2017 and it's like an Earth Day thing. Thank you, Venice. It's been 33 months and we have co-created 969 spirited events with, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, he's got a, um, it's a boring, it, it's mostly just retweets and like him, um, I don't know, like links to his Instagram. Yeah. So I don't know, boring on twitter i can see why he hasn't like tweeted that much because he hasn't grasped the concept yeah so yeah so maybe he doesn't have a tv because he barely tweets so okay that makes sense okay all right so yeah andrew yeah. keegan cult leader cult corner um i don't know watch out if you if you find yourself in venice beach one day i don't know you're just shopping maybe looking for some sandals because you're gonna go walk on the beach but i don't know you wanted like some hot new attire and you happen to see him i don't know selling kumbacha just um uh, keep walking girl keep walking yeah, just keep on walking. Yeah, maybe go. Uh, maybe go find like a street musician instead, and I don't know, dance, dance to like "Shake It Off" by <laughs> Taylor Swift instead. Shake it off. Or maybe just go. You know what? Just go to Hollywood Boulevard and I don't know, like dance with Spider Man or something, or like break the Donald Trump um, star. Do that instead. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we in 10 Things I Hate About You? So they get Joey, played by our favorite cult leader, Andrew Keegan, to foot the bill to get Patrick to date Kat. Because they convince Joey this is a great way for him to get Bianca when really Cameron wants Bianca. So yeah, this doesn't sound like it's going to end badly or anything at all. No. Oh yeah, this is like a recipe for yeah. disaster. Like a romantic comedy disaster. <laughs> uh, Joey goes to, to Patrick and he convinces him that to go out on a date with Kat, he'll pay him 50 bucks yada 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 uh, the thing is it's kind of hard to get cat to actually go on a date it's not easy so they have to do like research they have to like research into cat's life figure out what she's into yes what are i don't know her favorite bands her favorite books her favorite um her favorite tv star her favorite restaurants <laughs> yeah like just like what she likes like who she is because they know nothing really yeah and they use bianca for this uh, because you know bianca yes. like lives in the house she... bianca wants to go on a date yeah so like i don't know they find out like they're going they're, they're like snooping through her stuff and they find out that she has like um bianca opens up her underwear drawer and she finds like sexy lingerie in cat's um bottom drawer it's like a piece of blood it's a pair of black panties it's like the most basic i mean thing it's it's probably from victoria's secret so it's like probably a little a little like um sexy like on the sexy side it's, you can get caught in briefs at victoria's secret i know but the, it's like it's not like you're all like fruit of the loom like lady fruit of the loom do they have fruit of the loom for ladies yes <laughs> it's like, i'm wearing fruit of the loom right now ooh. so cat's not being sexy today she's not wearing her sexy vicky no push-up bra yeah no i'm wearing a freaking in sports bra because i plan on doing work on my car later yeah she's gonna be outside putting in a what, what was he, a headboard what did you say headliner board oh a headliner board i don't even know what that is okay so you know the roof of your car yeah you know how it's all covered in fabric yeah there's a board under that oh that like foamy thing that all that fabric is glued to is it that foamy? yeah oh yeah okay that's called the headliner board yeah so i'm gonna replace that board in my car because there is 
barely aboard in my car. So if I'm ever on Jeopardy and it's like an automotive category and it's like, this is the thin line between the fabric and the car roof. I'm like, what is a headliner board? And Alex Trebek is going to be like, yes, yeah. that is correct. You get 200 points. And I'm like, yes. And I win. And I'll win. And you better split that money with me, bitch. Oh, I will. That's the money that we're going to bankroll our Hawaiian mansion because when um exactly. when you get to add your i don't know your your doctor alimony i gotta find a doctor first but i'm currently dating someone who's not a doctor well i don't know you have to go to like dirtydoctors.com or something and find one um that sounds a little scary you can keep your current boyfriend he can be your side piece and then <laughs> the doctor the doctor can be the official one but like i don't know it's in name only oh i have a new one maybe you can find a gay doctor who just needs a beard <laughs> You can be the beard. Dude, it's 2018. Who still needs a beard? I don't know. You never know. Besides Hollywood actors. Maybe there's a very, like, conservative um, hospital somewhere in the world. Like a Mormon. Maybe there's, like, a Mormon hospital. that they, They're not... Um, no, because you got to convert to be a Mormon to marry a Mormon. Uh, That's why I'm not married. Well, you can go through with it. <laughs> you just take a few classes. Just go down to the Y, take a few Mormon classes. No, they make you wear special underwear and stuff. No, thank you. <laughs> no fruit of a limbs for me. Well, you can just say that you're wearing it. But you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Hot scoop. The gay, the gay Mormon doctor is not going to be allowed like in the religion. So like you, you can just pretend and then he's pretending. So like two pretendies cancel each other out. So, But God would know. Cat, the Mormon God is not real. God would know. The Mormon God is not Okay. Real. Just adopt the Catholic way of life as long as you um, confess to your sins, you're going to heaven anyway. <laughs> All is forgiven, Kettle, said the author. All is forgiven. Future fake Mormon. Oh my god. We're going to go on to like gaymormondoctorbeards.com and we're going to find one for you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just imagining now what Patrick would set up for a dating profile. All right. 2019 vision board for Cat Hall, said the author. Future fake Mormon. It's going to be a wild time. Well, wow, that's all right. Where are we in uh, 10 things eight about you? Okay, so they're they're paying Patrick to go out with Kat. Cameron and Bianca are getting closer through the tutoring. Uh, Kat eventually gives in to Patrick and kind of just like, it's like an accidental date to Bogey's party. Yeah, Bogey's party. This is like the scene too. I loved. Yeah. So like, Bogey's like the ultimate nerd in the school. Yeah. He's like, I don't know. He's like, he's like a STEM kid. But he is definitely king of the nerds after a hostile yes. takeover from Bernard. Yeah. So he's like, a stem kid like he's into i don't know mathematics engineering mm -hmm. he has a he has a big future ahead of him he doesn't want any um bad marks on his permanent record but he's also down to throw a cheese party a cheese tasting party oh, yeah. with his high school buddies because that's what his party was originally supposed to be like future mbas cheese tasting like come on dude how lame are you hold on though when i was watching this though yeah when i was watching this and they said this was like the other day i hadn't seen this movie in like 15 years it's the other morning nine in the morning i was fucking hungry and you know how much I love cheese? You know I love my cheese girl. Yes. And I saw the fucking, what's his name, Bernard? That's what we're calling him, no. Bernard. Oh, no, Bogey, Bogey. Bogey, oh. Yeah, Bogey's like, he was going to have a cheese party, like a cheese station party. Mm -hmm. I was like, fucking sign me up. I was like, I want to go to Bogey's cheese party. <laughs> but when you were 18, 19, 17, would you have gone to a cheese tasting party? No, but um, 35-year-old Patrick wants to go to a cheese tasting party. Uh Almost 37-year-old Patrick. Yeah, or, or whatever, however age I am. Almost 37-year-old <laughs> Patrick wants to go to a cheese tasting party. So, I don't know. I kinda God, I really do have to remind you of how old you are. <laughs> I don't know. If I... Great. I have to keep my sanity because I'm going to be the one helping Patrick throughout life. Great. I have a, um, I have a new mission in life, though. Want to hear it? Oh, God. I'm terrified. So, if I ever find like an inter dimensional portal, I would zap myself <laughs> into the 10 Things I Hate About You universe and I would ruin Bernard's plan so Bogey would still have the cheese party. And then I could go to the cheese party. <laughs> but where would you get cat dancing and Bianca realizing Joey is actually kind of an ass? I don't care. I, I don't care about that. I just want the fucking and cheese. And that her friend is actually a piece of crap. I don't know. Um, you know what? Patrick will have to work harder to win Cat's attention. I guess so. So so no. Sure. I don't really care. I don't... I'm sure there would be another party somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure maybe on the other side of town. You know what? Why couldn't... um. Why couldn't Andrew Keegan have a party? Yeah, why not? Like he, you know, if he supposedly is this rich bitch, um, has a lot of like endless cash flow, has a cool sports car and a cool jacket. Why couldn't he just mm -hmm. throw like a bitchin' hotel party? Because he couldn't get the hotel room yet? I don't know. I feel like he has, he has a connections. He probably has like friends with some college dudes. 
it's friends with some college dudes and probably i don't know maybe could have got a suite at the um seattle hilton and i don't know i, f- I feel like he had he had he had connections so, like maybe like his parents had like a cool like lake house i don't know man yeah or i don't know maybe maybe he was friends with um the imaginary lily sobieski character in this movie and they go to the glass house from the movie the glass house and have a party there man 1999 was a good year for teen movies though yeah i think the glass house was like 2000 though but it was close. Uh, oh, I was thinking American Pie, She's All That, Ten Things I Hate About You. A Walk to Remember. <laughs> I feel like that might have came out around the same time, right? I think that came out in the 2000s. Yeah, shout out to Mandy Moore, being 16. And, I don't know, having to, like, have her car towed in the candy music video because she wasn't, like, she didn't have her license yet. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I watched the making the video. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mandy Moore. All right, making the video was such a lit show because you just got like all this unnecessary background information about music videos that I just remember them all today. <laughs> yeah, like there are things I'm just like, why do? It, why is this in my brain? Oh, because I watched making the video. Yeah, like I don't know, like someone will bring up like a newfound glory video. Like I don't even like the band newfound glory, but I'll just bring up like a fun fact about the video. Like, there was like a um, there was a scene like where one of the guys was like naked and he was like really nervous about being naked in the in the music video, so he had to like. Faces fair, so he wouldn't be nude in it. And I don't know. I just remember that for some reason. Oh my god! He had like a life coach come in and talk to him that it's all right to you know be naked. Naked is a state of mind. <laughs> Shout out to a luscious Tashman song. Okay, all right, where are we? We need to get through this movie. <laughs> okay, yeah, we do, and you keep going on tangents. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, um, you know, Cat eventually gives Patrick sort of a chance. He's not that bad. They start to get to know each other, but she's still not like there yet. And then he does the ultimate thing. My favorite scene of this movie. After he pays off a few band geeks, he performs the song in the football field for Cat, and then he gets detention. Yes, um, you're too good to be true. I can't take my eyes off of you. Is it what's the name of the actual song? I don't know. I could I can't take my eyes off of you, I think is what it's actually called. Yeah. Later, um, covered by the Fugees. But um, hold on. We skipped over the dance scene. I just I, I just wanted to bring oh. the dance scene. Why not? Cat gets drunk. Cat has like a few, yes. a few drinks. She becomes fun cat. <laughs> just like fun cat on the general hospital episode of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> drunk cat. Yeah, so we get drunk cat. And she does like a, I don't know, like they're playing like a hip hop song. I forget what it is. It's like Return of the Mac or something. I don't even know. And she gets up. She like struts across the party. Like, she's, like, in one room, and she goes through, like, five rooms, and she's doing this, like, sexy walk, and everyone's, like, turning their heads, like, who's that lady? Oh, it's Kat Stratford, like, the ice queen. Like, yeah. what? She's now, like, grabbing drinks out of people's hands and, like, doing shots. And she's, she's just done with everybody else. She hops up on a table, like a poker table, and just does, mm-hmm. like, a sexy, like, almost stripper-like dance and, like, I don't know, like, twerking. Like, 1999 edition of twerking. Yes. White girl twerking. It's great. <laughs> it's fucking sexy. And hot scoop. Um, the people who were behind the movie Save the Last Dance, they mm-hmm. remembered this scene when they hired um, Julia Stiles as the lead role. So Another classic. Yeah, shout out to Save the Last Dance. Also starring Mackay Pfeiffer. I watched that movie a lot in college. I watched this a lot. I watched I did too. Bring It On a lot. And I had the soundtrack. And too. she's all that. All right, uh, where are we? We'll, we'll talk about the football scene now, the football field. Cats at Lake, um, soccer practice, and Patrick decides this is the moment. He is going to win her over right here and now. And he does, because, like, dude, come on. He sings for her in front of everybody. Yes. He makes a total fool out of himself. It is amazing. And they're even, like, trying to chase him off, like, the field, too, and he's, like, just, like, running yeah. around and dodging people. <laughs> It was great. It's great. It's definitely like... Um, like, they picked this school to film this movie at for this scene. Yes, it's a very monumental scene. It's, like, um, it's memorable. It's, like, what people remember. Like, I don't know, if you're watching, like, a BuzzFeed mm-hmm. article that shows, like, top teen movie moments, like, this is it. Like, this is probably yeah. it. This is probably the number one or two. Like, it is... It's a moment. Like, the only thing I think could um, surpass it is if you're doing 80s and 90s, because, I mean, which moment is better, this or Lloyd with the boombox? to say anything or or the dance sequence on the breakfast club is all oh oh, that is oh yes (laughs) i know tough tough choices here it's a hard choice these teen movies god they don't make them like this anymore we'll have to do a twitter poll all right top three iconic moments put them in this order i would probably do um the john cusack thing the boombox thing from sandy oh you know what though Mm -hmm. hold on uh. <laughs> oh, see? All right. Man, it's hard. All right, this is my definitive list. I'm going to do the Breakfast Club dance library scene. It's fun, but it is what it is. 
Number two is going to be Say Anything. Okay. And number one is going to be Heath Ledger singing um, I Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. Mm-hmm. That's that's my... No, no, no. Hold on. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I, can't, I want to, like, move them around. I don't know. Yeah, I think I have to agree. Or, like, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, the only thing I think could actually be added is the the scene from She's All That, where um, Freddie Prince Jr. and Rachel Lee Cook are dancing out by her pool. Because he's come to find her after prom. Uh, I'd also probably want to throw in Rolling with the Homies from uh, Clueless, too. Oh. <laughs> See, man, uh. this is hard. Yes, I know. Okay, you guys, tweet us. Tell us the top three. Okay. Maybe you know what? Make it five. Like, <laughs> let's do the top five. Yeah, <laughs> just do the five. How about the three that we just mentioned and then add two of your own? Yeah. How about that? Okay. That way we can like, make a hot list. Yes. Maybe we'll do like an article on Salty Rock Media. We will. We'll do a... We'll do a listicle. We'll do a combined listicle. Considering Kat has nothing but time these days because yeah. her hours got cut at work. Yeah, so, I don't know, make us some hot listicles, Kat Halstead, the author. Oh, wow. Kat Halstead, the listicle maker. We will br- brainstorm some listicles to make later. All right, I, I, I had a comment on um, Kat on this movie. Okay. She didn't seem like the athletic type to me for some reason, and but yet here she is like playing soccer or something, or field whatever she was playing, field hockey, soccer. Um, I kind of see her going that way, just as like a way to work on her aggression and anger. Oh, like it's, this is... Kind of thing. This is like her like boxing... Think about when she's out on the field. She's pretty aggressive. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like she seemed like the type that wanted to just like channel her energy into like dark poetry and music and like be like a Courtney Love type. I feel like this is her doing something like she gets her aggression out on the field. Okay, I can see it. That's the way I yeah. okay I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she just uh, maybe like music is a good outlet for her, but she can't get rid of all of her anger. It's not a mm-hmm. full outlet. She needs that like she needs physical aggression. Get rid of some of that. Yes. She doesn't want to like I don't know accidentally get like charged with like manslaughter or something for like running over. Andrew Keegan. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. She probably would have. Stealing Andrew Keegan. She wasn't out on the soccer field. Stealing Andrew Keegan's sports car and running him over. Oh my God, how epic would that be? <laughs> that happens in the de- the um in a deleted scene. It's, <laughs> there's like a, there's a um fun scene of like Andrew Keegan at the hospital and he's in that like full body cast. What happened? The Stratford girls. They killed. Tried to kill me. <laughs> All right. Can um can we talk about how Cat and I share? Like a, like a, a band that we like together? Oh, yes. All right. So are you familiar with Letters to Cleo? Mm-hmm. Not not really. Okay. So they're, they're a Boston like pop rock band. Um, it's female led. The lead singer is female. And I don't know. The, the rest of the band are, are men. Mm-hmm. And they they were kind of like big on the Boston scene, like the underground scene. Um, they, they have a lot of like, they're rock, but they're like Liz Fair type rock where it's like poppy and catchy mm-hmm. and very melodic. Okay. And... They they struck it big in like ninety three ninety four when they had a song on the Melrose Place soundtrack here and now. Okay. So they you know they kind of struck it big and I don't know they got like they got some they got national attention they were big um, they had some videos on MTV and this was around the time when like the Breeders was out and Veruca Salt so it was just it was that wild wild time and then I don't know it kind of they kind of like faded away. And you didn't hear from them for a couple of years. And all of a sudden, they were in 10 Things I Hate About You. Like, they did two songs. They did mm-hmm. I Want You to Want Me and um, Cruel to Be Kind. So I was like, whoa. It was like, they're back. They're back with a vengeance. And so after the, the soundtrack came out, and it was like a fun soundtrack, it was like the only way you could find those two songs. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, like a year after the movie came out, like you couldn't find the soundtrack anywhere anymore. It was like hard to find. This was like just around the time Napster and stuff was like starting to come into play. And I was like trying to find these songs and it would say it was that and I would download it. It would not be that song. <laughs> it was never the song you wanted. Yeah. So like, I don't know. So like this people would put the wrong artist. Like people would always like put Tiffany songs as Mandy Moore. Yeah. So like it, they were a hard band to find. Like these songs. And then they, they the band broke up. So they disbanded. <laughs> However, uh, the lead singer, Kay Hanley, she continued to um, record solo music. So I like I like actually like I'd seen her a few times. Like she's like plays little like plays little bars in Boston. And she was like a fun gal. She was like the one that like after the show, she come down and she talked to you and you can have a beer with her. Mm-hmm. Talk to you about music. And it, it, she was fun. And then uh, 2011, mm-hmm. well, it might have been 2010. I don't know. Like 20 something. Letters to Cleo got back together and I went to the concert and they played I Want You to Want Me. And it was great. It was fucking amazing. And ever since then, 
They play a reunion show every year in Boston and in Los Angeles and in New York. Ooh. And it's great. And they just came up with a new album. So they're back. And fun fact, Kay Hanley also um, wrote the music for Miley Cyrus. Like the so- Miley, Cy- Hannah Mon- Miley Cyrus is like Hannah Montana songs were all written by Kay Hanley. So ooga. Yeah. And she wrote the, um, like a lot of theme music for like kids shows on TV. Like, so I don't know. She's out there, but you don't, she's not like a big name, but she's out there making money, girl. Really? Yeah. So shout out to Letters to Cleo. So shout out to Kat for being into them and shout out to, um, yeah, shout out to them again. Shout out. Call us. Oh, and um, the, the lead singer for a while had like a private Instagram and she accepted my friend request. But I think now she's like fully like public because she's trying to get her like band attention. Yeah. Oh, yes. I was I was like, I squeed when I when I heard that. We'll get back to the movie. We'll... Oh my God. We have not talked about the best part of this movie. The part of this movie that haunts me forever. It's actually at the start with um, Kat having to go see the guidance counselor. Oh, Oh, and yeah, Alice and, by Janney. Alice and Janney. Yeah. Uh, okay. Who is a romance writing guidance counselor. And an awful one at that mad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. She She's like writing like Tumblr fic, like Tumblr erotic fic. Like bad Tumblr erotic fic. Yes, like the ones that just have like, it's really just porn, but you they have to put like text underneath it. So um, she uses the word member. <laughs> Yes, member and bratwurst. Would you ever use the word member and bratwurst in like a no. erotic story? No, very rarely. I'd be like his cock. If if you want to write like erotic fiction, you gotta be you gotta be like borderline vulgar. You, you gotta like shock the reader, but also spark them too. Like you gotta like you know yeah. You gotta eroticize them, and I, I feel like the word bratwurst doesn't do that. You gotta <laughs> arouse them, but you can't be like boring. But you can't be too like porny either. So it's it's a fine line. So I don't know. Maybe maybe this is the beginning of Alice and Jenny's um, erotic career. So I don't know. Maybe she was just learning. I think this is her trying to get into like writing. Romance. Yeah, she read one of the um, Fabio covered books. It was like, ooh, I can do this. <laughs> and she's got she's like just this cheesy lady who has a cat coffee mug and has to like look a cat and be like cat 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 cat, cat which I have gotten. All the time since that damn movie came out. I've heard that um, that Alice and Janney ad libbed that line. Thanks, Alice and Janney. Yes, thank you, Alice and Janney. Call us, tweet us at Rain Podcast. <laughs> Your gal pal, but that line has haunted me. Like I've had coworkers. Like it's not so bad anymore. Like I used to have coworkers who would always be like, "Oh, cat, cat." Like they fake having a cat coffee mug and be like, "Cat, cat," and be like, "You guys suck." But I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how many of my coworkers these days have even seen Ten Things I Hate About You. I'll be sad because. I never got Heath Ledger Patrick connections. I only get Patrick Starfish Star, Starfish connections. Seriously? Well, thanks Holly for yes. giving you one Heath Ledger moment. Yes. Uh, shout out to my only Heath Ledger connection. Um, speaking speaking of Heath Ledger, I, I I was trying to figure out when we should uh, bring this up. Let's just do it. I think now is the perfect time. Let's do it. Let's get it over. We're gonna do a conspiracy corner. Conspiracy corner on the death the death. Of Heath Ledger, which, all right, we know that he died while filming The Dark Knight. He played the Joker. He fell into the role. No, it was after. Oh, yeah, after he filmed it. Um, so he fell into the role. He was in a downward spiral. He was only getting, like, two hours of sleep at night. <laughs> he had, like, a dark journal. Um, I don't know. His health took a downturn, and he was on a lot of different medications to try to balance his life. and He was on a bunch of different medications from different doctors, and they were all interacting together. Yes, and one day, he just, I don't know, took a cocktail of pills, depressants, antidepressants, painkillers, everything. Like, anything that's, like, a controlled substance, he, like, he just took because he thought he could take it because the doctors told him it was all right, and he didn't wake up. Yeah. Mary Kate Olsen had to find him naked in a bed. No, the maid found him, and the maid calls Mary Kate instead of calling 911. That's where shit gets crazy. That's like, yeah, that's like where the conspiracy corner comes in. Because like, I've, I, I don't know, I've, I went down the dark web mm-hmm. many a times on this subject. Um, it's Brittany Murphy and Heath Ledger is like the dark web of conspiracy. Like you, you just like, you know, what? I just want to see like, what was the name of that Heath Ledger movie that I did in like 2002. And then you're like, oh shit, now I'm in like dark web territory. Mm-hmm. There's a very famous Vanity Fair article published in 2010 about Randy and Evie Quaid. Um, we we alluded to the Quaids in a previous episode. I believe it was the Dinosaurs episode, <laughs> in which you talk about how Randy Quaid is now crazy living in Canada. He's not allowed in the United States anymore. <laughs> um, but he he did a famous interview with Vanity Fair, in which he believes that there are there's an, an elite underground army that is out there killing Hollywood stars, yeah, murdering stars. Keith Ledger was a victim. 
And he be- at the time, he believed that Lindsay Lohan was next, and she very well could have because she fled the country. She's in, like, the, I don't know, the Middle East now or something. No, she lives in London. She's based in London, but she hangs out a lot in the Middle East because Middle Eastern men will pay her money to have sex with them. Did you see that fun Instagram of, like, Lindsay Lohan dancing, like, at a party? No. Oh, it's great. It's fucking great. I love Lindsay Lohan. Come back. Come back to the U.S. Um, I don't know. Get, out, get your own talk show. Get, like, a Netflix talk show. <laughs> or, you know what? Come on our podcast. How about uh, one up? Like I don't know, tell us some like Amy Poehler dirty gossip. Yes, come here and drag Amy Poehler. All right, back to conspiracy corner. Was Heath Ledger murdered? What is your hot take? What do you, what do you believe? Um, I kind of think he was. Like you think he was murdered like the same way Michael Jackson was murdered? Uh, no, because that was. I feel like that was definitely more accidental. That was like a doc. Well, hey, so Michael Jackson was killed because of one drug. Right? Propofol. Okay, Heath Ledger yes. had yeah. a cocktail of drugs. Like, there are drugs that there's no reason, from my understanding, like he should have even had. Yeah, and that's the average person, I don't think, like, is a drug expert, but, like, I don't know, there was, like, 10 drugs inside of him when he died. And I, I feel like the average person's like, all right, mm-hmm. this can't be safe to take all of these. Because, like, you read, like, the bottle of, like, you're just like, I don't know, let's say you get prescribed, like, Xanax, and it'll be like, just take one, like, use as directed, like, one every 12 hours or something. Do not take with, like, other drugs may cause drug interactions. May, like, do I, but this is just me. I Google what drug interactions before I take stuff together. Like, I didn't realize that Tylenol PM and Benadryl are basically the exact same thing. Yeah. (laughs) Until I Googled it to make sure I could take both. (laughs) Yeah. When I had that really bad reaction to the sun i was like oh it's the exact same thing okay i'm good yeah it's just it'd just be like you took two Tylenol pms or two benadryls well not really because yeah. i think there's also an antihistamine in uh so. benadryl. but the the, the sleepy the... well no 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 the antihistamine is in the tylenol oh i didn't know that yeah pm because it's this thing that makes you fall asleep well the, the funny thing one time was like i was saying like how I usually take Benadryl to help me fall asleep, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I never take Tylenol PM because it gives me weird dreams. But someone's like, it's the same thing. <laughs> I was like, it is? And then it, <laughs> I told you that. Oh, was it you? And I looked it up. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. That was me. I was like, I don't know, but I don't know. Maybe it's just like a psychosomatic thing. Yeah. Like, Tylenol PM like, definitely makes me have weird dreams, but Benadryl doesn't. Because if I take straight Benadryl, I have weird dreams. And because I even thought like maybe the dosage is different, but the dosage is the same. No, it's the exact same. <laughs> I don't know. So there's one theory that so, yeah. it might not be the this Hollywood murder club that killed Heath Ledger. It might actually be Mary Kate Olsen. That was like one hot theory because like why did the maid call Mary Kate? Because she had to come and like clean up evidence. Like what? Yeah, exactly. That's basically what her people did. Because like her security team shows up and they clear out a bunch of dr- like supposedly prescription drugs that were there. So when the police showed up, there was far less than what was actually there before it's a weird world i don't know it might have to be a red wine and mystery story Mm -hmm. i think um listen to our crossover episode with red wine and mystery stories in which we uh debunk i'm sorry our what our crossover episode with red wine mystery stories whatever you say patrick whatever you say all right let's finish the movie let's get to the end of the hot movie 10 things i hate about you and then we can (laughs) um we can make a very fun announcement pat gets patrick out of detention because she flashes david leisure which is problematic. <laughs> Which is, oh my god, there's there are things that, oh my god, I love this movie so much. But it is very much a capsule of its time. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of uh, a lot of things that may not happen in movies today. That would, no. Like a teenager flashing a teacher. No, so if, if that happened today, even though like it was a student, it would still be the teacher's fault. <laughs> so, and they go to paintball. Which I've never seen paintball like this in my life, except in this movie. And this is totally the kind of paintball I would only would I would want to do. So, so it's like water balloons, but with paint. <laughs> yeah, it's not like the pellets that shoot you from a gun. Yeah, I was wondering about that too, but I forgot about that until you just brought it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have like a fun date, and I don't know. Don't they like? Don't they go on like like a canoe thing too? Like they're in the ocean. Yeah, they go on like one of those paddle boats, and they go to the paintball, and they kiss in the hay. And it's really cute and sweet. Yeah, we get a lot of, like, city shots. I don't know. Like, I feel like make, make, mm-hmm. maybe, like, this is, like, all right, we'll let you film at this school in Seattle, but you have to, like, really film Seattle. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, really sunny. And it's sunny all the time. <laughs> maybe this was, like a, like, a propaganda film. Like, hey, we're not gloomy. We're actually sunny. We're actually sunny here in Seattle. Like the, the Seattle Film Squad or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we want more movies made in Seattle. Let's make it look sunny. Because singles made it look like we were dark and dreary. Shut up with the anti-singles stuff. 
I, that wasn't anti singles. That was just like anti anti so, anti sunny. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Would, um, like would really turn Seattle over, like and make it like a, I guess a more desirable place. What if they made a TV show called "It's Always Sunny in Seattle"? <laughs> <laughs> like the final season of "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia," they move to Seattle and it's always sunny there. And the, they get there, they pull up in the car, the gang pulls up, the gang goes to Seattle, they open up the new bar, and they walk outside, and they, they're squinting because the sun's so bright. Mm-hmm. Call me call me Danny DeVito and oh Caitlin Olsen. We'll, we'll, get it, we'll get this done. We'll get, we'll get on this. <laughs> they have a nice day, and they're talking, and she finds out where he really was the last year, taking care of his grandpa. And it's really sweet. And then he asks her to prom, and she gets all pissy. Aww. And then... Co- She's like, no, I'm not going to go to prom. Bye. Like, they're just done. And Bianca's like, why can't you be a decent human being? I want to go to prom. Will you please go to prom so I can go to prom? And then she and Bianca later have a heart-to-heart when she realizes, like, how sad her sister really is. Like, how important this is to her. Yeah. So, all right. So, there, there is a major development in, in the movie. So, oh. Andrew Keegan has basically, at some point... He he basically loses his chance with Bianca because like at one point Bianca's like n- like she's kind of like all into him like because he has a car he has a cool jacket mm-hmm. he's Andrew Keegan but she's she at some point she eventually just sees through his bullshit and she's like you know what I just want like a sweet dude like Joseph Gordon Levitt Cameron is that his name Cameron yeah it's after Bogie's party yeah it's like after Bogie's party well yeah because I think Cameron really expressed like interest in mm-hmm. in Bianca and he's like he he's actually looking out for her like best interest. Mm-hmm. And she realizes that. And she's like, you know what? He's not a bad looking dude. He's really sweet. Like, he's a little dorky, but, you know, in a couple of years, he'll probably be hot. He'll be hot in a couple of years, I bet. Mm-hmm. He'll get through his, like, his freshman awkwardness. Maybe he'll be, like, a hot 19-year-old. Mm-hmm. Blossom, he'll blossom in college. So, you know, maybe I'll stick with him. And, I don't know, I, I feel like she made the wise choice there. Bianca's been asked to prom by both Cameron and Joey. Joey just assumes he's got her going. Yeah, oh yeah, like he does. I don't think he asks. He just like assumes. Yeah. Like it's just like, all right. So what time do you want me to pick you up? And she's like, for what? Yeah. And he's like the prom. And she's like the prom. I ain't going to the prom. I can't go to the prom. It's like Cat's not going. I'm not going. Doesn't he show up at the house? Yeah, he does. <laughs> so Cat uh, eventually does decide to go to the prom after talking to Bianca and revealing to Bianca that she lost her virginity to Joey freshman year. Yeah, they had like a wild night and. I don't know. She regretted it, and he like I don't know. He like never mm. called her back. It was just like a one night thing. No, it was that he wanted more, and she didn't want to. She realized she wasn't ready for that. Oh yeah. D- did he like slander her name though? Too did he like? Of course, because he's Joey. Yeah. So he like said something horrible. I probably wrote something on like the be- men's room stall about her. Yeah. And you know, word got around school, and that's just like that's like end of the world shit right there. Yeah. Like, if it happened now, I'm like, I don't, I don't care. But, like, back then, that would be like... Oh, if it happened now, his ass would have been, like, suspended right away. No, but, I mean, like, if it, like, happened to, like, me, like, as an adult, I'd be like, oh, whatever, who cares? But, like, when you're, like, 14, yeah. 15 years old, that's, like, soul-crushing. It really is. So, it, it, it definitely, like, like, it ruined her. Like, it ruined her life. Like, she used to be fun. She was, like, popular. It, she, it did. I don't know, she, was, she had interests. That she had, like, a lot of friends. And, I don't know, she shut down. She emotionally shut down and... Yeah. Had a lot of stress. and She went into just, survivor mode. She's just like, you know what? The next like three years of this high school, I'm just going to get through it. And then I'm going to move to the East Coast, despite my dad wanting me to go there. But I'm going to go to the East Coast and I'm yeah. gonna move on. Move on with my life. I'm just going to get away from all these idiots. I'm going to get out of gloomy Seattle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go to sunny New York, where it's always sunny. <laughs> <laughs> so Kat decides to go to prom. She has a dress. Because, you know, you just have prom dresses hanging around or something I don't oh know. I, yeah i love that like i love like like it always happens like in anything that has a dance and mm-hmm. like the one character decides she's not gonna go and then like the night of she, there's always a dress available yeah like the night of she's like you know what maybe i want to go and she shows up in like a very like well kempt dress and it's um tailored to her like fit her perfectly yeah it's not something like she she drove to like macy's and it was the only like the last thing they had <laughs> yeah it's not like she hit up the tasty pennies and it was the only dress in this section um in her size hot scoop so there was a girl i remember in my that my junior prom and mm-hmm. she said she was gonna go she decided the last minute she's gonna go so like she showed up in like jeans and her t-shirt so oh wow yeah so that's what happens in real life yeah she tried to pull a cat and she she couldn't pull a dress together quick enough, so she had to show up in jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> a jeans and a fucking, like, NSYNC t-shirt. <laughs> oh my god, that is awesome. That is legendary. <laughs> it was probably, like, um, it was, like, the 90s, so it was probably, like, baggy. It was, everything was super baggy. Yeah. 
She wears like bangs. <laughs> so Pat shows up at prom. Patrick shows up at prom, and everything's going great. Um, Bianca goes with Cameron. The dad is like, Ugh. and then Joey rings the bell, and he's like, "I'm here to take Bianca to the prom." And the dad just slams the door in his face. Yeah. <laughs> And then he sh- then Joey shows up later with Bianca's best friend, played by Gabrielle Union, and she's like the worst friend ever. Yeah, uh, all right. In this, so uh, like I like Gabrielle Union, like she's she's like she's like she's fun, like she's great. Mm-hmm. I I feel like Hall, like they never found like a good role for her, like especially like in the '90s, she was just like the token black girl. Mm-hmm. Like she what was what was she in? She, was it she's all that? Uh ooh, she might have been, yeah. It was one of those. Like, she was, like, that, and it was just, like, they never found, like, a good role for her. It was, like, you know, we need to make this movie more diverse. Let's get Gabrielle Union. Yeah, that's pretty much what they would do. It's, like, okay, we need a black girl. Somebody call Gabrielle Union. Yeah, and she would get, like, six or seven lines, and she would always be, like, she was never, like, her character was never developed. It's, like, very underdeveloped yeah. character. Even, like, Bogey, I feel like, had, like, more yeah. of, like, a story arc than... Yeah, whatever her character's name is. I don't even Gabrielle remember. Union. So, I don't know. Like, Cassidy or something? I just felt bad for her. But, like, you know what? They put her on the cover of the movie. And like the poster, yeah. So like she, like she, I guess she was important for that sake, but not for yeah, yeah. Like a part of me felt like there was probably more scenes with her, but they were already cut. Probably because there's definitely yeah. scenes that like that got cut. There's like a Bianca and Cat argument outside Miss Perky's office that got cut. You see it in the uh, deleted scenes during the credits. So yeah, so like th- there's definitely some like weirdness to this movie too. Mm-hmm. Like I would have loved to see more Gabrielle Union. I would have to see her more fleshed out. My favorite part though is like she gets super bitchy with Bianca. She's like, "Oh, did you think you were the only sophomore going to prom?" And it's like, "Bitch, if Bianca had gone with Joey, your ass would not be here." Yeah, and it's like you're friends. Like, you're not yeah. competitors. Like, why Why are you, like, arguing with your friend? <laughs> and apparently, because obviously, she thinks she's better than Bianca. And she's not. No one's better than Bianca. Bianca, all right. But all right. then Patrick and Kat are dancing, and they find out, Kat finds out that Patrick got paid to go out with her, and that's not good, bad. Bianca gets pissed, and she goes, and she punches Joey, in the nose, breaks his nose. It is amazing. <laughs> it's great. You know what? Someone needs to go to Venice Beach right now and punch Andrew Keegan in the face. For, so, yes. For his tainted kombucha. <laughs> we don't. Sorry, we don't condone violence. I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> yeah, cut that out because we could get in trouble if somebody actually did that after they heard this. I'll cut that part out. <laughs> I heard it on a very special podcast. <laughs> Fuck, it's a very special podcast. I know. They're like, I heard it on a podcast. <laughs> actually, imagine if they listened to it on, if they looked it up on Facebook and found all those yeah. assholes from San Diego. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the wrong, a very special podcast got got uh, blamed for the, <laughs> ooh, you know what? Because they still have it as their Facebook thing. If we ever, um, if, I don't know, if, like, if anyone ever says anything like it happened on a very special podcast, we'll just go, it was the other very special podcast. And then <laughs> it was those dirt bags. Or maybe we could, um, it could be like a plot, <laughs> <laughs> a dastardly plot. <laughs> okay. That was my Muttley, that was my Muttley impression from Wacky Races. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, sorry. Well, the worst part is I knew who you meant without you, you even saying it, and that scares me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to do the wacky races sometime. Okay, coming soon. Where are we? Very special podcast. Hey, prom happens. Uh, we're near the end. Um, uh, Andrew Keegan got clocked in the face by Bianca. Yes, and it was glorious. You know, cat storms yes. out, and then Patrick shows up the next day to try and make things up to her. Oh, no, no, he doesn't show up the next day. He leaves a guitar in her car for her. Yeah, because there's a scene, like, earlier in the movie where she's at the music shop, Mm -hmm. and she's looking at a a Fender Stratocaster, and um, Mm -hmm. Patrick is looking through the window and watching her, and she's, like, I don't know, she's practicing on it. She's, like, rubbing her fingers over it. It's very... It's very, it's very um, fun scene, I guess. I don't know. Like, it's very, you know, Andrew, Ke- uh, not Andrew Keegan. Uh, Heath Ledger was taking notice. He was like taking note of her interests, and he's like, "All right, you know what? Mm-hmm. That hundred dollars that um, Andrew Keegan gave me, I'm gonna buy her the guitar." So he goes and buys a guitar and puts it in her car. And yeah, I don't know. She finds it. It's a very yep. sweet gesture, and she's like, "Huh." And somewhere in all of this, the dad has decided the girls are allowed to date. They don't have to both go out on dates because Bianca is gonna go sailing with Cameron. And Kat and Patrick get back together, and it's beautiful. They start kissing, and then music starts playing, and you see the band up on the roof of the high school, and you get these great shots of everything around them, and it's beautiful. 
All right, you want to hear um, a hot scoop about the the band on the on the rooftop? Go for it. All right, so I was reading an article. So like, Letters to Cleo is the band again. Shout out to Letters to Cleo, second time being mentioned. Mm-hmm. They they said that all right, they were asked to play on top of the school. So you know they went up there, they put all their band equipment up there. It was a very small space, mm-hmm. and they had this like helicopter flying in for the shot. And you know they were singing "I Want You to Want Me." I think it was, and they were told because the shot was so expensive. They they were only allowed like one take, so like they had to they had to get it, and it was like a long shot because it starts yeah. like in the distance and the the helicopter gets closer, and they talk about how it was like the it was an extremely windy day that day, and they were like frightened for their safety, like they were afraid they were gonna get like blown off the top of the roof. Yeah, and oh, I bet they saw the helicopter coming in, and like it, they said at one point it looks like the helicopter was gonna hit the building, and they were just scared, and they were all just like like panicking with each other and Kay, the lead singer was like you know what we just gotta do it we just gotta do the shot like don't fuck up like who cares like if we get blown off who cares who cares just do the shot and they did the shot and they nailed it first try like i could see it because the wind is scary and then you add in the wind from the helicopter flying around that makes it doubly scary plus um I'm afraid of like being on top of buildings yeah. in wind. I'll uh, just look at Lara Flynn Boyle on Vegas, Las Vegas show. <laughs> she got blown off the Montecito Casino. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's windier higher up because exactly. like, there's not trees to block things and like mm-hmm. buildings and stuff. So it's like windier higher up. Uh, trust me, I know I live in Colorado. Yeah, you live in the windy city, <laughs> windy state. <laughs> no, that's Chicago. It, it, no, it the, gets pretty freaking windy here. Does it? Like... Like, you open the car door, and it just swings back shut because it's so windy. Oh. And, like, I have been, like, I've almost, like, fallen over because the wind is pushing you so hard. I'll just remember when I go to PaceyCon in Denver to bring my windbreaker. Yeah, exactly. All right, you did skip over um, a very vital scene, the reason why they call the movie 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, the poem. God, what? See, this is... All right, so they were reading... Um, were, they, were, were they reading Macbeth? I forget. What, what were they reading in class? No, they were reading Macbeth. Or Ham. Was it Hamlet? They were reading... Yeah, they were reading sonnets. Oh, oh it's just Shakespeare's sonnets. Willa Shakespeare. Yes. <laughs> Lady Shakespeare's sonnets. Her beautiful... So the assignment was they had to take, like, a sonnet uh, of Shakespeare and then, like, I guess reinterpret mm-hmm. it in a, in a from a modern mind i guess like i don't know so which is like yeah. basically what the movie is basically they had to write yeah. a sonnet so they basically had to reinterpret the shakespeare sonnet with like a like in their own words which is kind of like what the movie 10 things i hate about you is which i thought was like a beautiful sentiment yeah julia styles i i don't know what sonnet she picked i can't remember i didn't pay attention mm-hmm. <laughs> but she picked one of the sonnets and she it, she, it basically was she listed 10 things i hate that she hated cat listed yeah. to eight things she hated about patrick it, and if you're like counting, it's really like 13. Is that's that's what I read mm-hmm. online? Like it's not actually 10; it's 13. But she, you know, she reads all these things, mm-hmm. and then like the last one, she says, "Is like I hate that I love you." Or something. The thing I hate the most of all is that I don't hate you, not even, not at all. That was it. Okay, because it was, and I did that without looking at it. That I know I. That is 100% from memory. I promise. Yeah, because like she's like reading it, and, and it made it sound like that she was burned by. Mm-hmm. by the uh the bet <laughs> but you know what yeah. she thought about it like she went home and she's like you know what like it probably that was pretty immature that was pretty like that was a yeah. low blow but you know what he did take interest in me and he sang it i can't take my eyes off of you in front of the whole school he bought me a fucking yeah. stratocaster uh he went to a lettuce to cleo concert with me <laughs> um i don't know he probably hired them to play on the roof of the school I don't, I don't know i don't know why they were there but they were there um yeah, yeah so he did a lot for me, and it just it started off on the on a bad foot. But I don't know. I guess I guess I can't be too picky. A guy is actually willing to put up with my shit. Yeah, like I don't know. Like you know what, Andrew Keegan, like he acted like he he acted like he was into me, and then he completely ignored me after. But yeah, Heath Ledger is doing the opposite. He's now like fawning for my attention. So yeah, you know what? Maybe there is something to him. Life is complicated. <laughs> Life is a complicated mixture of emotions. I mean, it really is. Yeah, that I guess that's the the meaning of the story. I can't believe I forgot the poem. Like you know, things get complicated, things get crazy. People do shitty things. Most of the time, they don't. There are some people who do. People do shitty things, but you know, mm-hmm. they don't mean to. I guess I don't know. Love is blind. Beautiful movie. Great teen movie. They don't make teen movies like this anymore. Do they even make teen movies anymore? 
I don't know, to be honest with you. Like, I stopped paying attention. I, I feel like they don't. I feel like this is like the last great teen movie, though. It, it's, the, there definitely was like a lot of early 2000s teen movies. They weren't great. But like, I don't know if it, was, if it was because we were like crossing over into adulthood <laughs> that we just look at them differently. And like, we're like 21 now. And like, we don't look at like high school movies as the same anymore. So I like, I think of this as the last great teen movie, but it's also like, mm-hmm. we're going to be seniors in high school. And now we like, we, we have different priorities, I guess. I don't know. But de- but definitely the, this is the last great teen movie. This is, it's definitely, because I mean, you still have, she's all that that comes out after this. And American Pie, so it's yeah. But you know what? You know what comes out like like there's like Super Bad comes out that that weird like party movie like Super Bad was not good. It was good, but it's more of like like a gross out movie though. It's more it, yeah. yeah. Okay, and you know what? I am sick of gross out movies. I'm sick of these rom coms that aren't really funny or romantic. They're more gross out sex jokes. It's like knocked up. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, this is our big announcement. What's coming up next? So, what are we doing next? It's been almost a year <gasps> since we've last dipped into the spooky world. Yes, the spooky graveyard, the haunted realm, the other world. We're gonna do. We're, here comes the booth. Our Halloween themed episodes. Things are gonna get crazy. We got some fun things coming up. Like we got tricks and treats. <laughs> And we're now entering into a brave new world because for next week's episode, we're going to do... Yes. Is it Halloween 5? The Roseanne? Is that the one we're doing? Yes. All right. Halloween 5. But, I mean, everyone knows. Everyone knows the Roseanne story. Mm-hmm. What's happened? It's been a while since we've um, we've last went to Lanford. It's been about a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a lot to say. Yes. We have a lot to say. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a tough one. But we decided... Didn't we decide this is like the last good... Roseanne Halloween like this is the last yeah we believe this is probably the last good Roseanne Halloween episode um because they get kind of eh af- after this this is kind of like our last gasp at one um so we are going to enjoy this the best we can yes we're gonna um so we're we might be closing the ch- we might be closing the the book on Roseanne Halloween's who knows well fun well- yes this is probably gonna be our last dip into the Roseanne's yep. For Halloween. But aren't we starting a new... We are. ...Halloween series? So while we are saying goodbye to Roseanne, we are also going to say hello to another series who does awesome Halloween episodes year after year. So we can't wait. Uh, So we're going to close the chapter on our favorite family ever, but it's okay. It's all right. And we're going to dip into a new kind of family. Yeah. A a family of co-workers. (laughs) Yes. Who work together and solve crime. Yes, exactly. Hilariously. Hilariously. Yep. yep. And um, we, 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 have, we have all kinds of stuff coming. It's going to be great. Kat's starting a YouTube channel. Yes. It's, we haven't titled it yet, or she hasn't titled it yet. I haven't. <laughs> I, know how, I love how everything's a we. <laughs> that is my life on the internet. Everything is basically me and Patrick. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we <laughs> do separate things. We're not always... Um, we're not always... We're not like virtually attached at the hip. Yeah, we're not the white stripes. It might seem like that sometimes. Just sometimes Jack White has to do things on his own, like the Rackan tours. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, th- that's two of like the five things that we're doing for Halloween this year. Yeah, so, we will see what happens. Yeah, so... Uh, and you guys, until then, you can follow us on Twitter at Very Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram at A Very Special Podcast. Tumblr is a very special podcast, of course, a very special podcast.com and saltyrockmedia.com. There's going to be links to everything we do on Salty Rock Media, so you can always find what we're up to together or apart. Yes. There. So go to go to all of our stuff, follow us and interact with us. We'll love it. We'll we'll do some hot polls yes. and we've been getting a lot of fun retweets lately. And we have some new fun followers, so thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys and gals and everybody. <laughs> All right, and as always, Cat Halstead, if you're Bye! Watch the band playing on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>